Cinderella East High coming off a state record 20 straight losing season is in the state finals for the first time since winning the title in 1974. The crushing leopard defense led by Jason Capusi has held opponents to just over 14 points per game. But the sting of the box elder B has been felt by all 10 4A opponents this year. The potent offense led by Phil Haywood is averaging nearly 40 points per game. The immovable leopards against the unstoppable bees. It's the Utah High School Activities Association First Security Bank Class 4A State Football Championship. It's a gorgeous day for football at Rice Stadium and coming your way the first of today's doubleheader high school football action. Our first game, the 4A state championship between the East High Leopards and the Box Elder Bees. Good afternoon, everyone. Dave Fox along with David James. Reese Stein is down on the field. Couple of newcomers, at least recent newcomers, to the state championship. Sort of a back to the future. We haven't seen either of these teams in this game in a long time. Box Elder and East have combined to win 20 state titles, but East last championship was in 74. Box Elder, 1960. Great matchup, too. When you look at, you know, Box Hill has got a great offense. East has a great defense. Something's got to give here. East only gives up 14 points a game, but Box Elder, they're like a whack team, they average 39 points a game. The Colonel likes to hang out in the trenches. He's down on the field now. Reese, nice day for football. Where isn't? else would you want to be in a high school football game than here on the sidelines, David? I tell you, what a great day for a football game. Let's do two, and we will. Uh, what a contrast. What a difference a year makes. Remember last year, of course, you guys were up in the booth where it was warm and dry, but down here on the field, I had every piece of clothing I owned on. There was snow in the stands, ice on the field. It was absolutely brutal. Not today. There's no ice. There's not even any AstroTurf. We're playing on the new sport turf here, and we're just about ready to go. Easton Box Elder for the 4A title, Dave. It's the first of two games coming your way from Rice Stadium. We'll have kickoff of the 4A championship coming up next. The 4A High School Football Finals are brought to you by First Security Bank, currently giving you 110%. By your Intermountain GMC truck dealers. By Coca-Cola, always competitive, always Coca-Cola. And by R.C. Willie, Utah's largest electronics dealer. Nobody beats R.C. Willie. Last night on 2 News at 10. I have no plans to step down. Enid Walpole talks to 2 News reporter Larry Warren. I believe when they were brought to my attention that there were clerical errors on my reports. I, I have a team of people in place who are ripping through this as quickly as they can. Meanwhile, the search continues for husband Joe. And where's Dave Fox? Hey, I got rid of that false old Fox back there. <laughs> so, watch 2 News tonight at 10 because there's more 2 News. R.C. Willie and Sony say no, no, no. No interest and no payments on select Sony products till January 97. Buy $500, pay nothing for 12 months. Buy 1,000 and pay nothing till January 97. Nobody beats R.C. Willie prices. This Sony 20-inch stereo monitor with remote 297. This Sony 4-head VCR 199. A Sony 8mm camcorder with color viewfinder 597. Sony digital satellite system 649. Hurry, don't miss the best offer anyone has ever made on quality Sony products. Nobody beats R.C. Willie. Nobody. Everybody has their own formula for success. Mine's pretty basic. Start with something you love, then give 110% every second of every minute of every day, and never look back. First Security Bank, currently giving 110%. All a dollar in greenbacks, your partners in value. It's time to start planning for the holidays. For the month of November, all a dollar is having a holiday special you don't want to miss. Three 20 ounce bottles of Coca Cola for only one dollar. It's time to stock up for the holidays, but you'll need to hurry. This incredible deal will only be on until the first of December. Three 20 ounce bottles of Coke for only one dollar. It's the best deal in town. Stop by all a dollar and greenbacks for all your holiday party and gift needs, stocking stuffers, decorations, gift wrap, and more for only a dollar. All a dollar and greenbacks, your partners in value. It's the Bees and the Leopards, and we're off as Matt Kebley kicks off for Box Elder. And East High, and Box Elder set and ready to go with a state 4A football championship. And the Leopards will take over 
Their first drive at the 20-yard line. That kickoff brought to you by your Utah Intermountain Truck Dealers. And there's Blake Bauman, the senior quarterback for East High. He's passed for over 1,300 yards this season, and they'll divide up the duties. He'll throw some. In the backfield, Stephen Agbor, and he has had a sore ankle. They haven't been able to use him much in recent games, but he was a big part of this offense for most of the season. And they'll come out throwing right off the bat with the pass over the head of Boo Bendinger, a very important part of this football team. He is a big play guy all the way. Has not played football since the sixth grade. He's been skiing, he's been playing tennis, he's been playing golf, he's good at pretty much every sport he tries, and he has been great for Easton football this year. Big play guy. Football coaches just love players who ski, don't they? <laughs> it's an unusual <laughs> combination, but uh, the way he's playing, who cares? Pass incomplete over the head of Bendiger, so second down and 10. Beautiful day for football up here at Rice Stadium. As Blake Bauman, the senior quarterback, pitches back, and it's Bendiger on the ground. They use him in so many different ways. Well, he averages eight yards a carry every time they hand the ball off to him. And as a receiver, he's got 37 receptions, most on the team, and he averages more than 12 yards a catch. So why not put it in his hands? He's going to run eight yards every time. He's going to catch a pass for 12 yards on the average. Reese Bendiger has been impressive all year. You know, he has. They used him as a decoy last week in the semifinals. We didn't see him much. They've already gone to him on the first two plays today, Dave. Well, and it's a net gain on those two plays of five, so they've left themselves with a third and five. Bauman looking to throw. He's got Bendinger, has him. Bendinger slips, but he does have enough for the first down. Well, the fundamental play there, run the pass pattern beyond the first down marker. He did, so it didn't matter when he slipped and fell. But remember earlier this year, Dave, a lot of the U players were talking about sports grass is different. It's not AstroTurf. It's not real grass. We're having problems keeping our footing. We're slipping. We can't find the right cleats. Well, those aren't the right cleats either. Well, they, they've had a whole season to try to find the right shoe and still haven't. These kids come in. This is their first game, and already we're seeing some of the problems that you deal with. In the past, we had quarterfinal and semifinal games here at Rice Stadium. This year, because they weren't sure how the turf would hold up, only the championship games are here at the U. That's Steve Havili. And Havili picks up about five, and did he slip? <laughs> yeah. You know, this East team is very deep in the backfield. We mentioned Bendinger averages almost eight yards a carry. Havili averages six and a half yards a carry, and Agbor averages six yards a carry. So they got three guys who can run the ball, and here we'll check and see if he slips. Now he got tackled. No slip there, Dave. Powerful running backs for this team, huh, Reese? Havili, only a sophomore, broke the big 50-yard touchdown to get him into this game, beating Bell River last week. Whoop, collision in the backfield. As obviously, something went wrong there. Peter Johnson collided with Bauman right as he turned around. There were three wide receivers right, and it certainly looked like uh, Bauman was headed that direction. You talk to the East coaches, the thing they like about Bauman, maybe not the most arm strength, maybe not the quickest guy, but they said he always knows the situation on the field. He makes very few mistakes. If there's trouble, he can ad-lib, and he always seems to make the smart play. There, when the play gets messed up, he just turns around, heads up field, and gets back as much yardage as he can. And protects the football. Absolutely. Third down, they need four. Bauman to throw. Intercepted. Caleb Mathis, and our first turnover of the game, and Fox Elder, you know, one thing East wanted to do is keep the football away from that high-powered offense, and just like that, they've turned it over in a very quiet bunch on the sideline there for East. Well, Fox Elder's got great field position now. They are at the East 42-yard line, and the one thing the East coaches wanted to do, they wanted to make sure they gave Fox Elder a long field, make him drive 70, 80, 90 yards, because this Box Elder offense is fabulous. Now there's a collision in the backfield. I, I wonder if these guys are a little bit tight. Yeah, way to go. <laughs> hey, what a great offense. It's fabulous. Oh, That's a Mark Dunn, the quarterback who, I think he collided with Haywood. Well, any, let's go back to that interception. Actually, here's the road to the oh, final to the final game. Box Elder with a 17-point win over Cypress. A close game with Murray, but they beat Spanish Fork decisively. On the option, done. Pitches back to Josh Deacon. 
And Deacon, great yardage all the way down to the 17, and that East defense gives up a big play there. The East defense has had a lot of success with an attacking style. In three playoff games, East has faced three teams who like to throw the ball. They've done a good job defending. But the East coaches say the last time we faced the option, Murray scored 33 points on us, and that was our worst defensive effort of the year. Here's the option. They don't defend it well. They do not want to face this option. They don't want to give up the big plays. They know they're going to give up first downs, but they cannot give up those big plays. 24 yards for number 24, and now it's number 32, Phil Haywood. Touchdown, B. on the touchdown run for Phil Haywood, his 19th touchdown of the year. Going after is good, and the Bees have struck early. 7-0. With a newly enhanced Vortec 4300 V6 engine and available push-button four-wheel drive, the GMC Jimmy can handle virtually anything you might encounter on the road. But you may appreciate Jimmy even more for its ability to get you out of your own driveway. Lease a new Jimmy for just $3.39 a month for 24 months at your Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealers now. are available at great expectations inside Valley Fair. When it comes to recycling, everyone can make a difference, but we've got to recycle smart. Your Coca-Cola bottler reminds you that recycling plastic is easy. First, remove all lids and collars from plastic containers and rinse them out. Then, flatten to conserve space. Remember, only two-liter bottles and milk and water containers are recycled locally. Call Utah Recycles to find out if curbside recycling is available in your area. Join your Coca-Cola bottler, Utah Recycles, and the Utah Soft Drink Association and help keep Utah beautiful. Together, Utah Recycles. 42 yards worth of ground game has given Box Elder a 7-0 lead, and they kick off once again, and East fumble. Oh, my goodness, a fumble, and Box Elder has hit pay dirt again. They just scored, and now they get the football right back at the 24-yard line, and a costly fumble for James Aitken. Once, once again, Box Elder's going to have the short field day, starting inside the East 25-yard line. They had to go 42 yards for the last touchdown. Now they're inside the East 25. And here they come again, bouncing off the line is Phil Haywood. He's the one that scored the touchdown, and what a turn of events. You cannot give up the ball like this, especially in a championship game. When emotions are so high as they are. Well, a couple guys we ought to mention here for Box Elder. The left side of their offensive line, Tom Harper and tackle Richard Watson at guard, and Kevin Johnson in the center. You notice Box Elder's run left every single time. They've done a good job. Those guys are making their blocks. Again on the ground, it's Josh Deacon, and they had two carries on that first drive that were huge, and this time East kind of stuffs them there, but they're kind of going right at them. One thing we should mention about the uh, offensive line, which is pretty big. I mean, the other guys, Brian Stander, 6'3", 240. Ryan Whitaker, 6'2", 215. But Tom Harper, at 6'3", 245. He has grown five inches since his junior year. He's taken a half a second off his 40 time. He used to run a 5'240". Now he's running a 4'740". In one year, Tom has grown a little bit. Flags are all over the place. They'll stop this play. Reese, impressive running, though, you got to say, by uh, Phil Haywood. Well, and Deacon on that last drive. Hey, keep your eye on number 74 on that offensive line, Ryan Whitaker. Two 
13 pound senior on the last drive it was his blocks that keyed both the long gainers including the touchdown he's doing a great job on the left side of the offensive line for the bees that time somebody moved so they'll back it up five yards and it'll be third down we could see mark dunn's first pass of the game he's a decent passer came in with 1600 yards passing what's impressive is he has 20 touchdowns and only three picks the whole year that's a great ratio they'll keep it on the ground though the pitch to deacon and deacon is going to be stopped just short maybe a yard short of the first they're just running left running left running left keep waiting for the payoff they're going to go back the other way and break something you can just feel it now we mentioned the option gave East trouble when they played Murray. East gave up 33 points to Murray, their worst defensive performance of the year. And Fox Elder's running right down the field right now. Fourth and two, they're going to go for it. Well, the left hash is a tough place to kick from. First down for Josh Deacon. And <laughs> Oh, boy, you, you're just over there going, hey, look at me, baby, I called it. I said they were going to go left. They did it. First down. Way right to go, there, coach. Actually, that was All right, I mean, left. Sorry. I know. I'll take the compliment. I don't care. You know what I meant. Yeah, Brian Stander and Ryan Whittaker are running behind the right side of the line there. And both coaches agreed that the big matchup in this game was the box elder offensive line against the East defensive line. The East defensive line has been terrorizing teams, especially good with their pass rush, and that's why box elder, it's important that they run the ball well on first down. First down it is, and Deacon gets a couple, but he's wrapped up in a hurry. First and goal, by the way, they're at about the nine and a half yard line, so they've got a score here. Well, that's a very difficult spot to get the first down because you don't have a lot of room to run pass patterns down here. You'd much rather get that first and goal down around the six or the four. Fox Elder having a lot of success just running the ball right at right at East. East, if they can force them into a passing situation, East is in charge because their pass rush is terrific. Second and goal, they're going to run. They're yeah. going to stop. They're going to run second might down again is what they're going to do. Might have had another uh, illegal motion Did, there. Didn't look like the line got off crisply there. A couple guys may have jumped. One thing Box Elder was going to try and do today, because they have so much respect for the East defensive line, they wanted to move the snap count. So not only have the quarterback do it with his voice, but they wanted to change the count, go with some quick stuff at the line, because they figure if East knows when the ball is getting snapped, if the East defensive line gets into a rhythm, they're really going to have problems. But it's been working against Box Elder here early on. Well, they backed up to the 13-yard line, so it's second and goal. Deacon and Haywood, the running back, and again, they're just uh, definitely out of sync on these snap counts. Now one thing you notice there, it looked like a three-step drop by the quarterback. Box Elder was going to throw, but they're going to throw with a quick drop because they don't want to give the defense time to get the pass rush going. They're going to be throwing some quick patterns here. Here's what you got to know about East. Eleven different kids for East have sacks this year. Eleven. Everybody on this team can rush the quarterback. Yeah, we're not talking just the four defensive linemen. You got linebackers, you got guys in the second string. Eleven kids, Safety. 26 sacks for East. Well, now Box Elder's all the way back to the 18-yard line with a second and goal. Haywood only gets a couple, so it's going to leave him with a third and goal from the 16. You would think that Mark Dunn will come out throwing. Well, there's a couple ways to think here. If you think you can throw up for the touchdown, and, and you got to remember, Box Elder has only been held below 28 points once this entire season. These guys score all the time, so they may throw it in the end zone, but you also might run the ball off the right side, get it in the middle of the field for a field goal attempt, because a left hash is a tricky place for a soccer-style kicker to push the ball back towards the middle of the field. Third and goal. They're at the 16-yard line. Done to throw. Fires into the end zone. Right through the hands of Sumco. And so they will be kicking for that hash mark. That's Mike Sumco. You think about a lot of the big field goals you remember seeing kicked. Uh, Miami, Florida State. Florida State always had a field goal at the end of the year. Always off the left hash, the kid would push yep. it wide. It didn't matter who the kicker was. There were a lot of big kicks missed off the left hash mark. And it's actually not as tough when you're further back. You get a you little better angle. Of an angle. Yeah. Yeah. They remember the Utes in the Copper Bowl with Jorgensen off yep. the left hash. Against Washington State. But this kick by Matt Pebley is good. And the Bees have gone up 10-zip. 
George thinks he knows about fresh fish. He spends cold cash to sit in a cold boat drinking cold coffee. That's fun. Men are weird. I just come to Dan's. I get really fresh Market Street seafood, not just trout. And I always get my mimic. Saturday only, get Market Street raw tiger shrimp at our lowest price this year, just $3.49 per pound. And certified Angus prime rib roast is just $4.99 per pound. And that's what I call a great deal. When people ask to see the complete line of furniture, appliances, and electronics that John Paris has to offer, we usually advise them to bring a sack lunch and a good pair of walking shoes. Whether you buy or rent, John Paris Furniture has sale prices every day and free same-day delivery. How long have you been waiting to save real money on quality name-brand furniture? We'll stop waiting and visit John Paris Furniture because we have sale prices every day. Se piove va di per la città, senza nessun pensier, e l'acqua nelle scarpe c'entra già. Cosa vorresti dire, cosa vorresti fare, se senti già le scuole farci già? Delicious oven-baked classic subs from Quiznos. Eat. Be happy. Join the grand opening of our new store in Fort Union next to Walmart. A couple of turnovers help the Bees to a 10-0 lead. This kickoff brought to you by your Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealers. A little fight for it at the goal line, but Bendinger's got it. And he is stopped at the 20-yard line. And again, East will take over there. Let's go back down on the field now to Reese Stein. And Reese, very impressive offensive showing and certainly special teams and that to get the uh, turnovers. Seller was amazing last week. Did the interception set up a lot of their... They scored touchdowns twice in every quarter last week against Spanish Fork. They've already scored twice in the first quarter here today can take some solace in the fact that them to a field goal on the second score anyway. Well, now the East offense needs to get things going. And they'll try the ground game, and that works for a first down and a few more. And look at the fight to try to bring Havili down. First time East had the ball, Dave, they picked up a first down. They started moving the ball. The two turnovers, a little uncharacteristic, they only had 17 all year in 12 games. And here... Watch him going through the line. Boy, the ball's out there a little bit, isn't it? And you can see Box Elder trying to tackle the ball and strip him, but that is a tough run. But East with only 17 turnovers all year, a little less than one and a half turnovers per game. They're actually, I think, plus nine in that column on the season. First down, and they'll stick with the ground game. And another nice pickup, this time Peter Johnson. You know, there's nothing pretty here, nothing fancy. They're just running between the hash marks. Reese Johnson was the big fullback last week. That's his first carry today. He's filling in for Agbor, and he scored two touchdowns a week ago. We got to see more of that for him from East to be uh, competitive today. Johnson's also great on defense. 70 tackles, and now he's stepping in at fullback when Agbar gets hurt. Second down and three. Quick handoff, and again, look at the look at the pressure. I mean, it's incredible the push that Peter Johnson you got to give East High credit in the line. Look where the pile ends up. There's a big stack of guys right on the 45-yard line. The line of scrimmage was a 40. The East offensive line, and you'll see it here in the replay, the East offensive line pushes Box Elder backwards five yards. Look at the pile. Everybody on the East line holding their blocks and just moving guys back. Another first down as East comes out, running the ball with great success, and now they're on the drive. Already trailing 10-0. Blake Bauman, the quarterback. And again, the ground game. They'll try the right side. And look at Johnson. That kid doesn't want to come down. Six foot, 180 pound junior. A lot of juniors on this team as they're, uh, they should be just as solid next year. You know, you watch this kind of play and you think we're in the third or fourth quarter and a big team is starting to wear the opponent down. You wonder if, if East can do this now. Think what they might be doing in the third and fourth quarter when these Fox Elder kids have been beat on for a while. Second down and five. They'll go left. Avili 
And Havili has another first down. So as they mix up the ground game here, it's paying off. Well, when they run left like that, they're running behind the brother combination of Matt Nyswanger and his brother Jeff. Jeff's a sophomore, Matt is a senior, and their dad's got kind of split loyalties today. Reese will have something on that a little later in the broadcast. Look at Avili, three carries for 30 yards. He's having a that's pretty a, good day. That's a but nice clip. Remember, they've got three running backs who average six yards a carry or more, so they can keep their backs fresh and keep pounding away at Box Elder. Another first down, reverse. Bendinger has the ball inside. Interesting play, a reverse that, kind of a reverse counter comes right back inside and Bendiger kips, picks up four yards. Well, that's exactly a good point, Dave. And then they were running that inside. It was a handoff. Usually the guy hands off to someone swinging wide right. and deep around behind him. And that was inside as if it was a counter. I think they were getting a little worried about Box Elder starting to maybe over pursue and look for those sweeps, so they ran that. Very impressive running game so far, Reese. Number 45, Nate Davis for Box Elder, a great defensive ball player, returned a pass interceptor for a touchdown, made the stop on that reverse. That's a good thing he did. If he hadn't, there wouldn't have been a tackle. Bauman to the air. Receivers are covered. He's going to have to keep it. Almost gets a first down on his own. Looks like they'll spot it just barely, about a yard shy. And that's going to bring us to the end of the first quarter. Box Elder has turned a couple of turnovers into a 10-0 lead. This is the 4A football championship. Effort is, is essential. If you're out there and, and you know everything there is to know about the game of basketball, but you're not willing to put forth the effort on the floor, the thought process isn't going to do you much good. So uh, you have to be willing to go out there uh, Get your hands dirty, so to speak, and go to work. First Security Bank, currently giving 110%. Easy Rent to Own, home of the $5 delivers, brings you Utah's lowest prices. With Utah's largest selection of top name brands, we still guarantee to be all competitor pricing. TVs and VCRs, only $6.99. Washers and dryers at $9.99. Stereos as low as $12.99. And sofas and love seats starting at $9.99 per week. So pick up your phone and call us now. It's so easy to rescue, oh, so far free to, to, oh, to. Well, Box Elder has the 10-0 lead, but East is on the drive. There's a look at the bunch on the sideline. Great coaching staff there at East High School. And you, you got to give those guys a lot of credit for turning this around. you got a lot of Cougars and a lot of Utes. Bellini, Sikahena, Kafusi, all the familiar names. It's You know what? It's funny to see Matt Bellini wearing red <laughs> and Sikahema. I asked him about that when I did a story on the coaching staff. He didn't really want to get into that. No, not this week. That wasn't his favorite topic. Hand up right up the middle. Nice decoy as they sent Havili off to the right side. And another good pickup. They got a first down, another three or four yards to go with it. First quarter statistics. East with 68 total yards. Most of them on the drive that's going right now. They got those two turnovers into their first two possessions pretty early. Yeah, if you had added this up two minutes ago, it, I mean, it would be completely lopsided. Well, that third and one was really set up by Bauman, pulling the ball down and scrambling on second down. Third and one is nothing for East, the way they're running the ball right now, so they get the first down. Pitch to Havili. And Havili will have another first down. Very this impressive. Is a, this is a really important drive right now for East because as well as they're running the ball, they've gotten so far behind. Later in the game, there's not going to be enough clock. They're not going to have luxury of running the ball like this. So they need, this drive's good, but they need to put some points on the board, tighten it up so they can afford to run the ball in the second half. Because look at Havili. He just gets right on his teammate's back shoulder, turns the corner first down. Boy, when you're running like that, why even bother throwing? As you said, you got running backs averaging six yards a carry. Three of them. This time, Bauman keeps. Ooh, he took a nice shot at the nine-yard line. Two hands on the ball, though. He's turned it over once with that interception, and he got popped by Josh Hodgson. But you see him wrap up the ball with two hands. He took care of it. No way, after a drive like this, they're going to turn it over. You don't see this very often. Look at him. He's looking like a fullback. Wrap it up. Boom. He tried to get low, but he didn't get low enough. Pretty good hit. Probably good. Blake yeah. Bauman. 
1,300 yards passing coming into this game. 12 for touchdowns, 10 interceptions. They've got a second down from the ninth. They can get a first down at about the two and a half yard line, but they won't need it. Touchdown, East. They've been running between the tackles on this entire drive. Luke Counter there, he was lined up outside wide. Nabili comes back inside. He is in the end zone, and East had to have that drive. After two turnovers, spot and box elder a 10 zip lead. East fans held those balloons for a long time. <laughs> they did. But they let him go now. Point after is good by Ben Lowe. And East is on the scoreboard. We got a ball game now at Rice Stadium, the 4A championships. The last thing this planet needs is another goofy gadget taking up valuable space. Yeah. Must be my pro form invented the space saver crosswalk. They don't call it space saver for nothing. <laughs> get it? Then get it. Recycling, everyone can make a difference, but we've got to recycle smart. Your Coca-Cola bottler reminds you that recycling plastic is easy. First, remove all lids and collars from plastic containers and rinse them out. Then, flatten to conserve space. Remember, only two-liter bottles and milk and water containers are recycled locally. Call Utah Recycles to find out if curbside recycling is available in your area. Join your Coca-Cola bottler, Utah Recycles, and the Utah Soft Drink Association and help keep Utah beautiful. Together, Utah Recycles. The Leopards have fought right back into this ball game. The Bees now holding a three-point lead. 10-27 to go here in the second quarter. The 4A state championship from Rice Stadium. Short kickoff. Fielded at the 20. So Fox Eller is going to end up with good field position again up to the 29-yard line. And here's another look from the R.C. Willie. Best seat in the house at the drive that... Ended with this touchdown run after 80 yards of football. And it was all on the ground. The only way to finish it right between the hash marks. East running game was awesome on that drive. Just unbelievable. That's the angle for the R.C. Willie. Best seat in the house. There's Havili who did a lot of the work on that one. And now Box Elder comes out. Leading by three. And they'll keep it on the ground. Great cutback there by Phil Haywood. He's got lots of room. Haywood run out of bounds at midfield. Now on that last drive by East, Blake Ballin ran it to, to near perfection. And R. Reece Stein is standing by on the uh, sidelines there with somebody who is very interested we're in up Mr. Bauman. We're up the stands with Rob Bauman, the East High quarterback, Blake Bauman's dad. And that was a nice drive. They did a nice job. They did a, went back to the run. There's a lot of up front. And they did a nice job. They don't give up. A little nervous the first two drives, uh, turnovers? Uh, there's nothing like being a father. It's pretty tough, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> Rob Bauman, the East High quarterback's dab, a fellow Highland alum up here rooting for East High today. How about that? Thanks, yeah. Rob. All right, Reese, and again, Box Elder. The last carry, 21 yards for Phil Haywood. And now just a little, a little quick deke by Deacon. The keep you honest play. You know, the interesting thing about these teams, Dave, we just saw how East is so resilient coming back with that touchdown drive. But both these teams are. The Box Elder kids, when the senior class, when they were freshmen, they only won two games. When they were sophomores, they only won two games. This is a team that has really grown up and matured. These are resilient kids. And the same thing for East. Until this year, they had not won back-to-back -back games since 1986. 20 straight losing seasons. And these kids turned it around. Mark Dunn. The quarterback, a terrific piece of running all the way down to the 24-yard line. 
And there's the versatility of that young man. 24-yard pickup. We were talking earlier in the game, I was talking about uh, the player who grew five inches, and I identified the wrong player. It was Mark Dunn, the quarterback, who grew five inches. And look at him, just dishing out the punishment. He was 5'10 last year. Now he's 6'3". He's taken, look at the way he ran there. He was running 5'240s last year. Now he's running 4'740s. That certainly helps your vision when you're passing as well. First and 10 as the Bees are on the move for the 24-yard line. Done again. This time he pitches to Haywood. And what a hit out of bounds by Peter Johnson. You saw Johnson running well on offense, and now he comes out on defense and lays out a big hit. Well, remember, offensively, he was a backup fullback. Injuries put him there. Defensively, he's been great all year. 70 tackles, no doubt about that. In this, in this offense, in this offense, you've got to go out and attack the offense, and the first guy has to make the tackle against the option, and he is just... There's not going to be a lot of gang tackling against an option. Guys have to make the tackles and make their assignments. Again on the left side, a big hole this time for Josh Deacon, and what a tandem. And Reese, Phil Haywood, and Deacon both running well. Haywood, uh, 199 yards in last week's semifinal game. You can see why they go to him. They can all, you know, also use him as a decoy and go with Deacon or the quarterback and keep. It's an awesome option attack. How about 1,500 yards for Haywood on the season? Yeah. That is a, that's a <laughs> load of work. That, 12 games, you can do the math on that. That's about 120 yards a game. Yeah, I got a calculator. Okay. Done. Touchdown, Bees. Touchdown run happened right in front of Reese Stein. Reese, I thought he was going to run into you. Oh, he did. A great-looking touchdown run. He slid right into me after Bo Bendinger knocked him out of bounds. But again, he's having trouble covering everybody. Well, Box Elder had great field position in the first quarter. Short drives, but that was almost 70 yards, Dave. Vortec 4300 V6 engine and available push button four wheel drive, the GMC Jimmy can handle virtually anything you might encounter on the road. But you may appreciate Jimmy even more for its ability to get you out of your own driveway. Lease a new Jimmy for just $339 a month for 24 months at your Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealers now. If you buy 1,000 chairs, you should get a better price. R.C. Willie thought so. We purchased 1,000 comfortable Lazy Boy rocker recliners in four beautiful colors. Each comes with Monsanto's two-year fabric warranty. Lazy Boy gave us special pricing. They're now on sale for $2.99. You'll save $100. Could it get any better? Buy one and get this handsome floor lamp absolutely free, a $60 value. Hurry, we only have 1,000. Nobody beats R.C. Willie. Nobody. This holiday, instead of stuffing, basting, roasting, tasting, filling, slicing, mashing, dicing, just pick up the phone and call. The City Market Delicatessen can cook up a turkey dinner for you, complete with all the trimmings. All you have to do is heat and serve. Call ahead and let the City Market Delicatessen do the cooking. and you think, well, it's Utah against Weber State. But really, this is a whack game all the way. Both offenses are controlling. We have not had a punt yet. We've had a couple turnovers, two turnovers, three touchdowns and a field goal. Both teams are running the ball up and down the field. Big chunks of yardage. Box Elder, 136 yards rushing on 15 carries, nine yards a pop, and East did almost that well on their last drive. Yeah, Weber State had loved to play Utah. <laughs> First and 10 for East as they take over the 34-yard line. Back to the ground game, Peter Johnson. 
Offensive lines are hammering defensive lines out here today, no question. You know, you like to average five yards a pop on first down. Set you up with some short down and distance things, but these teams, five yards, they haven't even been hit at five yards. Very impressive running attacks. They're going to have a measurement here. He may have picked up 10 yards on first down. On the last drive, they ran for a first down on first and 10 twice. It looks like they've done it a third time here. They're just not supposed to do that. It's not normal. No, but it's productive. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be lighting that scoreboard up. First down, he got it. You know, it's interesting as we're preparing for this game, when you, you look at high school, it's, it's very common to play both offense and defense. Box Elder really only has one player that does it regularly. East has uh, three or four. But we're going to see a team this afternoon, Fremont, where just about everyone plays on both sides of the ball. But you might, obviously, they got a lot of football players up in Box Elder country. Right up the middle again goes Johnson. Just look where the pile ends up. That tells you everything you need to know about the East offensive line. They are all six yards downfield. The backs have great numbers, but it's very unusual for an offensive line to be driving the opponent down the field like that. You know, we did see a little nerves early, Dave, but uh, it's odd. Both these teams have settled down pretty quickly. You know, in Box Elder, you, you were talking about the line. They got some big guys on their line, on their defensive line. They had 200, 235, 240. Some big guys. Avili drives the left side, and he has another first down. I don't think we're going to be seeing a punt here anytime soon, Dave. It just doesn't seem to be. <laughs> Darn it. I just love I, the punting game. I know. That's why most people pay to see football, there's no doubt. Hey, Reese. Great running behind the nice Swanger brothers, number 52, Matt, the 220-pound senior. At number 59, only a 10th grader, Jeff Nyswanger, made the key block out here, which uh, sprung for the big yardage. You'd mentioned how Matt kind of helps Jeff every step of the way. East coaches say Jeff rarely misses an assignment because if he has even the slightest question, Matt knows everything. Matt can play. Matt knows everything. Well, I'm sure he's glad to hear that. <laughs> Matt plays all five offensive line positions. If they have an injury, if they have a problem, Matt can slide over to center, either tackle, either guard. He knows everybody's assignment in the offensive line on every play. Matt's 6'2", 220. Jeff, a couple inches shorter, about 20 pounds lighter, but he's only a sophomore. Reverse. It's that same play to Bendinger. He cuts inside, and he's got a first down. Well, we've talked about the box elder offense averaging 39 points a game, but the East offense averaging more than 26 points a game. And the way they just keep pounding away, you understand why. He started slowly, but they've won seven of the last eight games. First and ten as the Leopards continue to move, and they continue to keep it on the ground. Peter Johnson ducks the head, and it takes about six killer bees to bring him down. There's just, there's just no problem with East running the ball right now. They want five yards on first down. They're getting more than that every time. Second and three is just a beautiful down and distance for an offensive coordinator. He can do anything he wants right now. And the way they're running the ball, I think they, they did aren't throw you two passes all earlier in the game. If you have a second and short, aren't you tempted to just let one fly? You've thrown two passes. One of them was intercepted. You're averaging eight yards a pop on the ground. Um, no. <laughs> oh, I'd just be tempted to for television well, purposes. You, well, oh, I'm sorry. You mean what do we want them to do? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Second and three. Of course, they'll keep it on the ground. Havili tries the right side and nothing to it. Run out of bounds there. Kurt Anderson. Now maybe you've got now, Dave, on third down, we like your call. A little play action pass here, third and two. Could be the call. You got to you got to respect the run. You got it. The way they've been pounding the ball away. It's third and three. Steve Lang and Kurt Anderson shut that one down in a hurry. There was nowhere to go. And hang on here. Officials are trying to work something out. The box elder crowd is going nuts. 
they have got, I think, the entire county's here. Everybody's here. Look they at brought it. a great crowd, They got a didn't they? great crowd here with Box Elder today. And you know the great thing about a great crowd? Everybody is in purple over there. It's just Everybody. a sea of purple. It's a sea of purple. There it is. Although East got an awfully nice crowd here today as well. They really do, both crowds. And they're in red. Good work. They're going to add some time back on the clock. I think that's the problem. They want to put eight seconds back on the clock. But enthusiasm's really high at both schools because this just, this is not normal. They have not, especially at East, 20 straight losing seasons. They haven't won back-to-back -back games since 86. And they come out here and they win seven of their last eight games. And East could be good for a while. Their JV this year, six and three. And they have only 10 seniors. They got 40 juniors. So East could be good again next year. Third down of three, Peter Johnson. He's got the first and a couple of more. Still up. He finally brought him down. And East is going to stick with the, the bread and butter. Like I said, Dave, there's no reason to go with a play action pass on third and three. <laughs> you are bad. We're going to turn your mic off. For those minute. of you just tuning in, there's no reason. First down, East threatening to score again. Bendinger, pitch was a little high, but he hang on to it. And he'll pick up a couple. Reese Stein is on the field now with the father of a couple of very important linemen for East. Reese? Well, let me, uh, let me introduce you to Bill Nyswanger. Uh, Bill's got a couple of big boys. How are they doing? They're doing really good today, and I hope we can get from this deficit and uh, go ahead and win the game. Uh, Bill's a little nervous right now, but they're playing I'm very, very well I'm and very nervous. moving the ball very well. Now, let me ask, where did you play your football at high school? I played baseball at Box Elder. Uh, you went to Box Elder, so you can't lose today? Who are you rooting for? No, uh, East High. No question, All the way. East High. Well, here they go from the 10, Dave. And off in the backfield, the Havili tripped up, gets down to about the 6. Great cut. Great. He was supposed to be going off tackle maybe there. He just broke that thing right back up the middle. Great read. And the, uh, the box elder coaches are well aware. They, they know Bill pretty well. And when I was talking yeah. to him yesterday, he said, find out what color shirt Bill's wearing. He's box elder class of 75. His kids are at East, and he's going to sell out. We know it. He's going to go with the kids. He's probably wearing purple underwear. Technically, I don't know if you're selling out if you're rooting for your kids, though. I mean, you know. No, you're not. <laughs> probably not. Third down. They need about three. Or six for the touchdown. Nope. The thing they did do, Dave, is they ran that right back into the middle of the line there. So if they decide to kick it here on fourth down, they did send the ball up. But there's just no hole at all. Box Elder, they've had their problems with the run, but they finally get the stop on downs. Leopards are going to take timeout to decide uh, whether or not they want to go for it. That certainly seems to be the indication as Blake Bauman comes to the sideline to talk to coach Chris Georgilis, who's put together a nice coaching staff. Kafusi is one of those on there. Rich Kafusi played at BYU. His Cap little sick Matt Bellini, and his little brother, of course, uh, also plays. I, I asked Rich before the game how he managed. When he first got here, it was like last April. He said, these kids were so used to losing. It's all they knew how to do. And for years, that was the case. And even this year, you remember as we covered East throughout the season, they just suddenly, it was like five, six games into the season, we're like, hey, these guys are pretty good. But the East coaches said, we knew this team was going to be good because the junior class, back when they were in eighth grade, they won their Little League championship. When they were in the ninth grade, they finished third. As sophomores last year, they only lost one game. He said, last year when they were sophomores, we were tempted to bring them up to varsity and give us a little oomph. Um, but he says they were winning, they were expecting to win, and we just wanted to keep those kids together. And it's paid off. He said, uh, Coach said, this year we hope to be 500 and be hot near the end of the year and make a run in the playoffs. Even he didn't know they were going to be this good. Only three losses all year. It's been an impressive run, and they'd like to keep it going. Right now, it's a fourth down. Big play for the Leopards. Bauman to throw. Oh, the pass batted away at the last second. It was intended for Kafusi, and Steve Lang just got the hand in there and took the play away. I think these coaches thought about the field goal there, but the way Box Elder's been putting points on the board, they had...
to get the seven because Fox Elder's getting seven every time they go down the field. It was Casey Munns that got in the way of the pass. You see it right? It looks like it's going to be complete for a second, and then Munns just bats it away. Munns has done a great job in the postseason. He ran an interception back for a touchdown last week in the semifinal win over Spanish Fork. And Fox Elder comes back. A lot of room for Josh Deacon all the way down to the 35-yard line. Fox Elders had the ball. This is their fourth possession, and they have gone touchdown, field goal, touchdown, and way to get out of a hole on first down inside your own 10-yard line. Big defensive stand, and they come right back. Their first offensive play is a butte. I mentioned Box Elder hasn't won a state championship since 1960, but they have had some good times, most notably, and the class of 92 wants to have this mentioned, a 92 team was in the state semifinals, and they finally got beat in a double overtime game. But that 92 team was very good. West beat them in double OT. I think West went on and won the state title that year with an unbeaten team. You know, the funny thing is, East has a great state championship record. They just haven't been in it forever. They're like 11, they're 11-1, and won in championship games. Well, that's, a, that's a very impressive record. Box Elder has seven state titles himself, so both these teams have great histories. Let's go back down to Reese. They honored the Box Elder 1960 state championship team in Brigham City yesterday, and I remember that team. Uh, I was in high school way back then when Box Elder went on to win it. We thought uh, Highland might have a pretty good shot at a state championship at repeating that year, but that was an outstanding Box Elder team, and this team looking to repeat and make it uh, another one for Box Elder today. And they won that game in 1968 to nothing over Payson. Right now, the Bees trying to pick up another title here, and a lot of room for Josh Deacon. Josh Deacon, a terrific run all the way down to the 14-yard line before Ben Lowe can knock him out of bounds. Boy, that, you know what? That's really going to help your average. <laughs> yeah. Good point, Dave. Oh, on the re Two carries, 90 yards. Here's a great cut right here. Deacon breaks outside. You see another slip on the sports grass. Deacon, nine carries, 134 yards. And two big ones on this drive alone. The Bees getting ready to score again. 15 yards a carry for Deacon right now. Incredible. Deacon again. See, they give him the ball at the 14. It's going to bring his average down. That's no right. matter what he does. Although even that, he picks up seven. Look at this. Average, Average yards. yards. Yeah. Box Elder's doubling East up, and six yards a carry isn't too shabby. Well, Box Elder exploded last week. Box Elder has scored 50 points three times, and they had a fourth game where they broke 60. So they've been over the 50-point mark four times in 12 games, and they might do it again here today. Deacon wrapped up and dragged down. He'll get a couple of yards. It's going to leave him with a third and two from the six-yard line. Box Elder scored 56 points in their opener back in August against Spanish Fork. They scored 57 at Ogden, 68 against Ben Lohman, and then 54 against Spanish Fork in the semifinals. Box Elder team has been held under 28 points once all year, and that was their only loss when they got beat at Weber 20 to 6. And Weber's a bigger school. Well, and everyone has a down week. And a fumble. Ball's loose. The Bees recover. Touchdown, Box Elder. was very close to the goal line, Dave. I thought he might have been in, and I think some of his teammates thought he was in before he fumbled also. But if you watch, you got if you don't hear the whistle, you keep playing, you got to go get the loose ball. It's a good thing they did. See in the replay, if he's in the end zone, it's going to be tough to see from this angle. But the ball's already out. We don't see it. If you don't hear the whistle, go get the ball. That was a live ball. That was a fumble in the end zone. And Nate Putnam is the young man who landed on it. I'll bet Nate did not expect he was going to score a touchdown today in the state title game. <laughs> well, Nate primarily playing on defense. Gets in and gets six. That's a bonus for all of you to have him on your fantasy team. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
The Bees have opened up a 17-point lead. Dave, we should mention with only a minute and 14 seconds left before the half that at the half we'll go back to our KU TV news studios for Channel 2 News Update. And we have some uh, news today. Joe Waldholz has turned himself in in Washington, D.C. And wow. the uh, news crew's working on that. I know we got reporters in Pittsburgh with the Waldholz family, Brian Malahi, and also Larry Warren's in Washington, D.C. So we'll have a halftime news update to bring people up today on uh, up to date on developments in the Waldholz case as he turns himself into authorities in Washington, D.C. today. You're pretty good at news, you know that? <laughs> you did that really well. Yeah, it's a little meeting with the news director. <laughs> See what we can do for you. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. You keep working on my career. <laughs> you just keep plugging away on it, will you? Minute 14 to go here in the first half, and Box Elder has blown this thing open. Keep in mind, it was 17-7 to when East was at the, what were they, the six, five-yard line, with yep. looking for an opportunity to cut the lead to three, and now they've fallen way back. Although East did not score, you see the wisdom of that decision going for it on fourth down. Box Elder keeps putting touchdowns on the board. There's no point in kicking the three. Yeah, it would be 24 to 10 right now. Yeah, exactly. So East will try again. Big hit at the 12-yard line. Woo. A great hit. That was a. And they're just fired up right now. Look at the the thing about the crowd. That scoring drive did it again. 92 yards, five plays, a minute and a half with Putnam falling on the uh, fumble in the end zone, but. The crowd is not sitting down on the box elder sideline. Those people have been on their feet forever. John Milan with a big hit there on the kickoff. So East comes out with 53 seconds. They need to go the length of the field. They got a lot of work to do. And I'm not sure if that's going to get it done. Akbor gets a couple. Well, they may not want to throw the ball down here and give box elder another chance. Well, that's a good point. They may not want to risk a turnover. And they're inside their 20 as they start to drive. Bauman was trying to get a timeout. It took him about seven or eight seconds before anybody would pay attention to him. But again, as prolific an offense as Box Elder has shown today, I think you got to try to get everything you can on the board, no matter how much time's left here in the half. It, it was at 53 seconds when they snapped the ball, and now down to 37. That was too much time for a quick play off the left side. Well, the other thing to remember here is that East received the kickoff to open the game. Box Elder's gonna get the ball yep. to start the third quarter. It's 24-7, and Box Elder's had the ball four times. Touchdown, field goal, touchdown, touchdown. It's a very good chance it could be 31-7 early in the third, unless the East coaches can make some adjustments at halftime, because they've just had no answer for the Box Elder running game. Well, that East crowd's not giving up on them. Well, at least not all of them. 37 seconds to play. And about 78 yards to go in this first half. Now into the air, looking for Bendinger. Bendinger's got it! Oh, they'll keep at the 42-yard line, and they're going to keep the clock run. They'll stop it long enough to move the sticks, but the official's going to say he didn't get out of bounds. Well, the thing is, it's going to take so long, as they go no huddle, they're coming to the line, it's going to take so long to move the sticks that East is going to get set, and we may see them, see them throw a quick incomplete pass here and stop the clock. Of course, they also may have called two plays in the huddle. There's a chance we'll see another deep pass here. Bauman again to throw. Quick pass to Kafusi. And now the clock is ticking with 15 seconds. They've got no timeouts. Well, now you need to throw the ball down. They got to get set. And they may not be able to do it. Five seconds in the half. There it is. Spike with three seconds. 
The call to Kafusi might be a little curious because you think they might have run something near the sideline in that situation. But the thing you got to remember about Jason Kafusi is he hasn't taken a short pass and broken a long touchdown run since, since last, last week. week. Exactly. 49 yards. And that was with them behind in the fourth quarter. That was a huge play. Kafusi's made some big plays. So you know why they went to that short out to him there. They're trying to isolate him, hope he could break a tackle. Because he's got the speed to go if he slips the first tackle. Well, that play against Bear River set up a touchdown, a very crucial touchdown. And just the coaches, game just, yeah, That's mm -hmm. all. That's all. This they, should be the last play. Three seconds to go in the half. Bauman looking for Benninger. Almost intercepted, and that's going to bring the half to a close. And the Box Elder sideline is just going crazy. The fans up in the stands are loving their bees. Stadium in the 4A football championship. The Bees lead the Leopards 24 to 7. We'll take a two news break here shortly and be back with the second half. The Utah High School Football Championships are brought to you in part by U.S. West Cellular. Last night on 2 News at 10. I have no plans. Step down. Enid Walpole talked to 2 News reporter Larry Warren. I believed when they were brought to my attention that there were clerical errors on my reports. I, I have a team of people in place who are ripping through this as quickly as they can. Meanwhile, the search continues for husband Joe. And where's Dave Fox? Hey, I got rid of that false old fox back there. <laughs> so watch 2 News tonight at 10 because there's more 2 News. Avoid sticker shock. Visit John Paris Furniture for top quality name brand furniture without the high price. Where can you buy top quality name brand furniture on sale and have it delivered the same day you buy it? John Paris Furniture. We have sale prices every day and free same day delivery. This holiday season, remember, we're close to home and we're close to you. And you're sure to find everything on your shopping list at money-saving prices like these. Check cereals. Buy two, get one free with in-ad coupon. Hershey's Large Candy Bars, only 99 cents. Princilla Yams, just 79 cents. China Paper Plates, $1.89. And Ocean Spray Juices, two for $5 at your neighborhood family grocery store. We're close to home and close to you. Back there. Don't worry, love. You're riding in the world's first sport utility wagon. I am. That's right. This year's the all-wheel drive Subaru Outback. That's great. But... You know, it's got more cargo space than a passport. Uh-huh. The ground clearance of an Explorer. Yeah, but... Oh, did I mention? It gets much better gas mileage than a Jeep Cherokee. Outback, you say? Subaru Outback. The world's first sport utility wagon. From Channel 2 in Salt Lake City, this is 2 News Special Edition. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm glad you're with us today and that you're enjoying the football game. Well, six days after he vanished, the estranged husband of Utah Congresswoman Enid Waldholz surrendered this morning to the Justice Department in Washington, D.C. Joe Waldholz faces mounting questions about a $1.7 million check hiding scheme. Waldholz was taken by this van from the Department of Justice building to federal court, where he is appearing before judge this hour. After Representative Waldholz got word of Joe's surrender, she made a brief statement to reporters. I, uh, I have every confidence in the Department of Justice and their ability to get to the bottom of the fraud and the deception that Joe perpetrated on my family, on his family, on me, on friends and, and many others. I know that they are all hurt and sad as I am as we now try to comprehend what Joe's done. And uh, that's all I can say at the moment. 
Joe Waldholz is being held on a federal arrest warrant as a material witness in the fraud investigation. The judge will either set conditions for his release or keep him in jail. We'll have live reports from Larry Warren coming up on 2 News at 5 and 6. And now to the other big story out of Washington today. This is day four of the federal government shutdown, now the longest in U.S. history. And it looks like the warring parties have only begun to fight. Bill Plant has the latest from the U.S. Capitol. The president and leaders of Congress continued their war of words over the budget. Mr. Clinton accused work. Republicans of holding I federal employees work. hostage and announced I'll that he was partially reopening but two key agencies on his own. This coming Monday, the Social Security Administration and the VA will recall to work additional staff to process applications and claims. The speaker and the majority leader said they, too, want to put the government more. back to work. All Mr. Clinton has to do is sit down with them. And we, frankly, don't know how to get his attention beyond press conferences and, frankly, uh, political campaign gimmicks. Democrats had a field day making fun of Speaker Gingrich's complaint that he was ignored by the president during the long round trip to Israel on Air Force One. Fry baby. New tantrum. The White House happily released this photo taken aboard Air Force One, which seems to show the speaker in animated conversation with the president. The White House spokesman said the president was sorry the speaker took offense, but that he shouldn't use it as an excuse to shut down the government. Then he made a peace offering of sorts. I, maybe, maybe we can send him some of those little M&Ms yeah. with the presidential seal on it or something. Like that. that would be one of these, a little souvenir box of candy with the presidential seal on it and Mr. Clinton's signature, hardly enough to repair the deep distrust which now exists between the White House and Republicans in Congress. But there are signs of movement. For one thing, the president is turning down the rhetoric. He will make no public statements today, and the White House seems resigned to waiting for the main budget bill to be passed, to get here so the president can veto it, and then real talks can start. Maybe this will be over by Thanksgiving, maybe not. Bill Plant, CBS News, the White House. Congress is advancing toward approval of yet another sweeping Republican plan for balancing the budget, but it faces a certain veto by the president. Well, the government shutdown is already affecting weekend plans here in Utah. Lake Powell is closing down all operations this afternoon. In fact, private boat owners will have to leave their crafts unattended. The vessels will not be allowed to leave their slips or their buoys. Concessions will be shut down and roads leading in and out of the recreation area will be blocked to traffic. Meanwhile, there is still no word from Washington on whether it will let Arizona Governor Symington use state resources to temporarily reopen Grand Canyon National Park. The state is mobilizing a National Guard contingent and a group of state employees to help reopen the park. But Interior Department and White House lawyers have not determined whether it can legally turn operation of the park over to the state. Symington says he has no intention of moving volunteers into the park without permission from the National Park Service. And here locally, a Jordan High School student is in serious condition this afternoon after being stabbed in the chest. Police say two students were in a hallway of the high school when one of them pulled out a knife and stabbed the victim twice in the chest. The suspect then fled on foot from the school grounds into a nearby field where he hid until police found him and took him into custody. Police are questioning the suspect at the Sandy Police Department. A metal detector has been installed and the counseling offices are full at Highland High School today. This after an argument between students yesterday turned violent. The suspect went into school with a gun after deliberately ramming his car into another student's car. The gun discharged, but no one was hurt. Parents today, though, are still outraged that a shooting could happen at Highland High. It's a good school. It's a good high school. And I've got a lot of people saying that it's a great place to go. But I get a little bit concerned. When my kids get threatened at school, they come from an education not to find fights. Maybe we have to resort to metal detectors. Whatever it takes, something's got to be done about this. School principal Chuck Shackett says security has been beefed up. There are two additional Salt Lake City police officers on campus today, as well as officials from the Salt Lake Metro Gang Task Force. And he says some of the kids who associated with the two students involved have been asked to leave school for their own protection. He says the counseling offices are also fully staffed, and counselors have been seeing students all day. And in just a moment, Bill Boss will be here to check our forecast. Looks great for the big game tomorrow. Yeah, we'll be right back. I got a house on fire here. People up there, get me some help here now. What do we got? We have a boy upstairs corner. How are we gonna get somebody up there? There are people who, in the course of an ordinary day, do extraordinary things.
such is the courage of many firefighters, like the firefighters whose instruction enabled a boy to rescue his family from their burning house. It's Dave Wade and Paul Ellsworth and others like them who inspire the hero in each of us. First Security Bank, currently giving 110%. When it comes to recycling, everyone can make a difference, but we've got to recycle smart. Your Coca-Cola bottler reminds you that recycling plastic is easy. First, remove all lids and collars from plastic containers and rinse them out. Then, flatten to conserve space. Remember, only two-liter bottles and milk and water containers are recycled locally. Call Utah Recycles to find out if curbside recycling is available in your area. Join your Coca-Cola bottler, Utah Recycles, and the Utah Soft Drink Association and help keep Utah beautiful. Together, Utah Recycles. Cherry Signer Midbell has GMC trucks. We have one of the biggest selections of two-wheel and four-wheel drive full-size trucks, extended cabs, work trucks, and Sonomas. We even have the new, more powerful 96s. Plus, with our low prices and payments, we can find a vehicle to fit your needs and your budget. Just look at this GMC Jimmy, only $325 a month, or this extended cab discounted $2,100. We'll work hard for you at Jerry Signer Midvale, making friends to last a lifetime. 7200 South, east of I-15. Okay, the weather's looking great for football. Yeah, that's great for the big game tomorrow. We're going to see temperatures in the upper 60s at Provo for the kickoff tomorrow afternoon. Beautiful today as well. And the next five days along the Wasatch Front showing mid-60s today. Tomorrow, a little cooler Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, but staying dry. And Dixie five-day forecast showing temperatures staying in the 70s for the next five days. Sounds terrific. Good football weather. You bet. Okay, thanks a lot. May get a sunburn out there, too. Now we send you back to Rice Stadium with Dave Fox, David James, and Reese Stein. Have a, Have a good day. day. All a dollar in greenbacks, your partners in value. It's time to start planning for all the holiday parties. Spice up your baking goods with Spice Rack seasonings and spices. Christmas, rainbow and chocolate sprinkles, cinnamon, nutmeg, and a great selection of salts and seasonings. Go for the gold with Clover Club potato chips. It has the quality you can see and taste. That's the golden guarantee. Stop by all a dollar in greenbacks for all your holiday party and gift needs. Stocking stuffers, decorations, gift wrap, and more for only a dollar. All a dollar in greenbacks, your partners in value. It's an old saying, but it's true. Do the crime. Do the time. Think about it. While you're doing time, think of the times you'll miss. Hanging out. Sure beats hanging in here. Check your anger. A message from 2 News. Check your health. Sit, Rusty. I keep telling you, good folks, you're not going to pay a lot for a muffler at Monarchy. Sit, Rusty. And when the champ says something, that's that. No need to repeat myself. Sit, Rusty. At Monarchy, you'll always get a high-quality muffler at a great price. Sit, Rusty. <laughs> hey, champ. Sit, Rusty. I knew I should have gotten a boxer. At Monarchy, you're not going to pay a lot, but you'll get a lot. I guarantee it. George thinks he knows about fresh fish. He spends cold cash to sit in a cold boat drinking cold coffee. That's fun. Men are weird. I just come to Dan's. I get really fresh Market Street seafood, not just trout. And I always get my mimic. Saturday only, get Market Street raw tiger shrimp at our lowest price this year, just $3.49 per pound. And certified Angus prime rib roast is just $4.99 per pound. And that's what I call a great deal. Welcome back to Rice Stadium. We're just about set for the second half of the 4A football championship. But so, you know, statistically, it's been a very close game. But Box Elder has made a few things really pay off as we look at the second or the first half stats. The first downs are pretty close. Box Elder, the East has been good on the ground. Box Elder has been great. Box Elder has not had to throw the ball. I don't. Can you remember a passing attempt? I'm not sure I even remember one. The uh, the key stat, the two turnovers. East threw an interception and fumbled and lost it. Box Elder also fumbled, but they recovered their fumble for a touchdown. Makes, yeah, a, makes a little difference. 163 yards rushing in the second quarter alone for Box Elder. They're scoring co so quickly they have no time of possession. Eight minutes and 26 seconds they've had the ball. Let's take a look at the touchdowns now for Box Elder. On their Haywood. first possession after an interception, they went 42 yards for a touchdown. Hayward put them up 7-0. Oh, 
Another East turnover made it 10-zip. Box Elder settled for a field goal. Then East came back, made a game out of it here. This was a great drive all on the ground, made it a 10-7 ball game. Avili scoring the touchdown there. And then it was... <laughs> And it was Mark Dunn coming back on the option, almost running Bill Cortez, our cameraman, over in the corner. That he got was a, a piece great of Reese. drive. He did get he a got piece, a piece of, Reese. of Reese. That was a 94-yard uh, touchdown drive after the box elder defense had stopped East on fourth down inside the 10. And then just before the half, the fumble, the loose ball in the end zone. Box elder recovers and makes it 24-7, and that's our score at the half. East High back out on the field, and Box Elder on their way as well. Here come the Bees. 76 years of championship football for East High. Back in 1919, they beat Pace at 79 to nothing. Let's go down on the field now. Reese Stein is standing by with Coach yeah, Raisler of the Bees. With Box Elder Coach Wes Raisler. Seven. Your kicking game's working. You recover two fumbles and interception. What are you going to change? And we're not going to change a thing, but we know they're going to make some adjustments. And I told the kids they come out second half, expect a new defense and offense. We expect them to go for the big plays. And the last two games, they've come from behind and won their games, so we're ready. You're not taking anything for granted. Nothing for granted. Pour it on. All right. Let's go. Good luck to you, Coach. Okay, you hear from Coach Wes Raisler, the box elder coach. He's up 24 to 7. Got to keep his kids focused. He knows that East can come from behind, eh? You know he was in that locker room just screaming at him, sort of like the old commercial. Oh, uh, but coach, we're up 24 <laughs> to 7. Yeah, they're it, coming back. He makes a good point about East, though. They were down 13 to 3 at halftime last week in the semifinals at Utah State. Came back, took a 17-13 lead, fell behind 21-17, came back, rallied again and came away with the win over Bear River, 23-21. They came back twice in that game, and they were down 10 at the half. Of course, here they're down 17 at the half, 24-7. And it's a championship game against a very good team. I thought it was interesting, the uh, common opponents that these two teams have had. There have been uh, five of them, and some of the games have been, the scores have been frighteningly similar. The Cypress game, Box Elder goes 35-17. East goes 37-19. They both beat Cypress by 18 points. Box Elder beat Bear River for the region championship by three. East beat Bear River in the semifinals by two. Both teams routed Ben Lohman by uh, four touchdowns or more. Box Elder beat Mountain Crest by 10. East won at Mountain Crest by six. The one big difference, and the game that's really tipped us off to what's happening here today. Box Elder beat Murray 28-24, had a, a defensive stop late in the game to save it. East lost at Murray 33-13. Murray ran the option. East couldn't solve the option. They gave up 33 points. That was the East defense's worst performance of the year. They gave up 33 points to an option team, and it was exactly one month ago. Since then, they've won three playoff games against passing teams. Today, they face the option. And although Box Elders had a lot of success throwing the ball this year, they haven't had to throw it today because the option has been unbelievably successful. Well, and that loss to Murray, too, it comes at the end of the season. You don't, you don't feel so bad about it if it's early in the year, but when you do that heading into the playoffs, it doesn't look good. Well, East has lost three games this year. The first uh, opener at West, the region champ, they lost 17-14. And then in Olympus, the region runner-up in the second game, they missed an extra point in the fourth quarter and lost 21-20. Murray is the only team to dominate East all year. Beat them by 20 points. You see a similar offense. You see a similar result happening here. The East defense has had no success today. They did get the big stop and held them to a field goal. And that possession's a little misleading because Box Elder recovered a uh, fumble at the 25-yard line. They fumbled on the kickoff return, and they only picked up about 15 yards before they kicked the field goal. Well, you want it, you'd love to be able to force Box Elder to throw the ball, but the problem is every time they run, they pick up eight yards. I mean, they yeah. never have to. They have never, they really haven't needed to throw the ball at all today. Well, the thing is, if you do force Box Elder to throw, and we haven't seen that yet, but Dunn this year has completed more than half his passes. He's thrown for about 125 yards a game, and he's got 20 touchdown passes and only three interceptions. So even if Box Elder is forced to pass, Dunn's good at it. Well, and he's efficient. Yeah, he doesn't throw the ball away. Nope. Well, the second half kickoff is brought to you by your Utah Intermountain GMC truck leaders, and we are underway. Box Elder gets the ball again, and it rolls right past them. So East, they're in a hole as it is, and then they come out in the second half, and they have to kick it away. Now, that's a play that may confuse people right there. 
kickoffs are a live ball. The ball's lying in the end zone. Nobody's touched it. The official blew the whistle. But in high school, if the ball touches the ground in the end zone, it's an automatic touchback. So as soon as the ball touched the end zone, the play was over. If you're running in the NFL, you go down and cover that. I remember a, uh, yeah, a I playoff remember game, game in yeah. the 80s. And somebody let it go. Uh, it was the San Diego Chargers, and the Pittsburgh Steelers got a touchdown yep. because James Brooks didn't pick the ball up. Quite Way frankly, go. I'm still looking for James Brooks, but that's another story. <laughs> We're underway in the second half. Mark Dunn, the quarterback for Box Elder. And he delivers to Phil Haywood, who picks up right where he left off in the first half. I believe that was Coach Racer's uh, words there. We got to keep doing what we're doing and not let up because he's just come back. First and 10. You run for about 20 yards and a first down. No problem. Boy, that, that's you got to be frustrated if you're on the east side. I mean, every time. They put the ball in the breadbasket of one of these bees. They pick up huge yardage. <laughs> Done. And the only question is, who does he hand off to? It's the pitch to Josh Deacon. And Deacon good for eight. Well, Deacon's been averaging close to 15 yards a carry. On the year, he ran for 845 yards, eight yards a carry, nine touchdowns. He would be the star in most high school backfields. With stats like that, he's third in touchdowns on this team. Haywood ran for 17, Dunn ran for uh, 12 from the quarterback spot, and Deacon's run for nine. It's just incredible that Haywood comes in this game with 15, more than 1,500 yards rushing this season. Of course, then you see what he's done here, and it's, it's not so surprising. He'll try the right side, this time Haywood. And after the stiff arm, Haywood picks up good yardage down to the 33. Elder's got 30 seniors on this team. The last college or the last high school football game for these guys and the last football game period for many of them. And they are gonna they're gonna go out on a high note the way they're going. Yep. Talking to the coaching staff, not a lot of these guys are being recruited. He said partly it's the offense we've run. We got a lot of guys with great numbers, but when you're running the option, there aren't a lot of college teams in this part of the country running it. It's just kind of the same thing as Skyline. It wins at this level, but it doesn't necessarily impress college recruiters, although apparently Utah State has started to look at Dunn. Ooh, that ball is almost fumbled. Haywood does a nice job of wrapping it up. Pitch was a little bit high. Now that goes back to what we were talking about at the half. East fumbled, couldn't recover it. Box Elder fumbled, recovered it for a touchdown. There. He doesn't get hit just as he's getting the pitch. The line did its job sealing off. If there'd been any penetration, maybe he gets hit, and that's a turnover. But East hasn't been able to make those big plays here. There's no question East needs to create a turnover to get back into this ballgame because Box Elder is not showing any signs of slowing down. Haywood again. And he could have another first down. Boy, it's just one right after they they just do not stop. They just powerful, powerful running game. Well, Haywood is the star in this backfield. Carried the ball 186 times this season for 1,570 1, yards. He averages for the entire year more than eight yards a carry. And he's it. averaging a lot more than that today. Yeah. First and ten from the 23. The pitch outside again. It's Bill Hayward. He's run out of bounds right near where Reese is standing. Reese. I'll tell you what, Box Elder quarterback Mark Dunn has taken a beating. James Atkin, number 42 of East, is on him every play and just follows through all the way. And then they get up and shake hands and pat each other on the helmet and go back across the line of scrimmage. But they've got quite a personal duel going on here. Well, it's a good thing he's grown five inches and gained a little weight in the last year. A little more durable, a little tougher. Actually got five yards on that. Second and five. 106 yards already for Phil Haywood. But he won't get any there. He's gave him an unusual look there. The defensive tackles were split wide. There was nobody lined up on the football. There's nobody even inside the offensive guards. See it again in a big hole right up the middle. And then East just shuts it down. Kerr stepping up into the hole, and East just shuts it down. Johnson got there as well. 
Deacon's got 151 yards already in this game. So this pair, boy. Third down and five. The Bees are going to take a timeout as the play clock got cleared down to one. Boy, third and five. I don't remember a down and distance situation for them to possibly on that. Uh, they had the penalties that uh, bogged down the drive where they settled for a field goal. Yeah, it's interesting. It looked like they were just a little confused down there, and then they finally took the timeout. We'll do the same. When it comes to recycling, everyone can make a difference, but we've got to recycle smart. Your Coca-Cola bottler reminds you that recycling plastic is easy. First, remove all lids and collars from plastic containers and rinse them out. Then, flatten to conserve space. Remember, only two-liter bottles and milk and water containers are recycled locally. Call Utah Recycles to find out if curbside recycling is available in your area. Join your Coca-Cola bottler, Utah Recycles, and the Utah Soft Drink Association and help keep Utah beautiful. Together, Utah Recycles. Trucks in more trucks. It's 4x4 time, and we've just received a special allocation of nearly 300 pickups, Blazers, Tahoes, and Suburbans. They had the best price in town on anything. Just look at this new pickup, discounted $2,300, or this Blazer, only $289 a month. For more than even the pricing, it was just how I was treated here at Jerry Siner. It's truck time at Jerry Siner Salt Lake. We're making more than great deals. We're making friends to last a lifetime. Some nights, seems like you can only give about 60%, but there's, there has to be something inside you that tells you that, that I can play a little bit harder, and pretty soon you find that, that you think you're giving 100%, and then you tell yourself, I gotta do something else if we're gonna win this game, and uh, you can push yourself beyond even your own expectations. First Security Bank, currently giving 110%. Bees are already up 24-7. They're threatening to score again. Haywood has done a lot of the work. He had 51 yards rushing in the first half, but on this drive alone, he's got 55. Dunn's going to throw into the end zone. Just barely beyond the fingertips of Ben Huff. So the drive stalls at the 17-yard line and a field goal, presumably. Although the players, all the Fox Elder players, are down on the field calling to go for it. Well, this would be a long field goal by high school standards, close to uh, 35 yards. Well, it looks uh, it looks like they're going to go for it. Fourth and five, and Coach Racer says, "Let's go." Spot. I don't think he got it. He had to get inside the 18-yard line, and he may have held on down. Well, neither team's really pointing. Yep, they held him. East defense comes up big, and that is crucial. That's as good as a turnover. That's their first stop today. They've given up three touchdowns and a field goal. Oh, that's a big boost for East. Hey, Reese Stein's got the mayor of Brigham City, who's probably a happy guy right now. Who is, that? Who is the mayor of Brigham City? What's your name? Clark Davis. And uh, what do you think? I'm uh, I'm not the mayor today. I'm the father of number 45, <laughs> outside linebacker. Well, I want to know who's watching the shop back in Brigham City. You leave anybody behind? Everybody's here. It'd be a great day to steal in Brigham City because they are here. Maddox is closed. Everybody's shut down for the stadium. Well, we left the secretary's home, but everybody else is in the stadium. What do you think of the What do you think of this game so far? Well, I'd be satisfied to go home right now. <laughs> the mayor of Brigham City and the whole town of Brigham City, the whole of east side of Box Elder County is here on the east side of Rice Stadium today. I need to introduce uh, you. To Reese, Dave and I got to go. We're <laughs> heading up to Brigham City. Get <laughs> yeah. the van, Dave. <laughs> Second down and 10 as Bauman comes out and throws a badly underthrown pass and East goes back to the ground game. Did you, just, did you just invite me on a crime spree? Is that what just happened here? <laughs> Suddenly the traffic headed north is picked up. They, they do have a lot of people here from Brigham City today. East High School after the stop going right back to the ground. We've seen this play before. They ran it for their only touchdown. 
and uh, Havili, 10 carries, 70 yards, and he got the touchdown. He picked up nine yards there. Third and one. On the ground once again, right up the pipe. It was Peter Johnson. We talked about this early in the game, Dave. They are now down by three scores. There's eight minutes to go in the third quarter. There's a limit to how long East is going to be able to grind the ball down the field. Right now, they can probably still do it, but the clock is going to become an opponent in a little while. Remember, we play 12-minute quarters in high school football, and you can really roar through the clock. Field position, time of possession becomes so critical, and those early turnovers really put East in a hole. Well, East really needs to show they can turn that... Uh, defensive stop into some points here. Bauman goes to the air. And the pass just beyond Havili. Havili had the defender beat. Well, you make a good point about East turning this into points. Remember, in the second quarter, East gambled on fourth down inside the 10-yard line, figuring they were down 17-7. They figured they need the touchdown, and they could at least leave Box Elder with a long field. Well, Box Elder went about 95 yards for a touchdown. They turned yeah, a fourth like down stop. Plays. They did. It was a five-play drive. They just blew right down the field. They turned a fourth down stop into points at the other end of the field, and it is up to East to do the same thing now. Avili tries the right side. He has enough for a first down. And he almost broke that. He almost went all the way. And as you say, getting out of bounds in a high school football game, even with seven minutes to go here in the third quarter, but with the score as it is, that's crucial. That could help. You watch him. He gets pulled down from the hips, almost from behind. Whoa, he's almost gone. I mean, he is almost out of there. Josh Hodgson, number nine, might have had an angle on him. He was the last defender. He beats Hodgson's. He's out of there. First down. Bauman will keep it. Nothing doing. Blake Bauman dropped for what... It looks like he at least gets to the line of scrimmage, but there's a play that just never really had a chance. But we haven't seen many of these yardage situations. We actually have a second and ten here. Hard to believe. That is odd. Both teams have been running the ball so nicely. Alvin again will go to the air. Good day. He already recovered a fumble for a touchdown. Now on second and ten, he breaks the pass up in the backfield. Nate's a big kid, too. 6'6". Six, six. You get those paws up in the air, you can knock that ball down. Now, there are a lot of big guys on this team. There are actually seven players from the Box Elder basketball team playing football. He gets up in the air and bats that away with both hands. The basketball team's going to be very happy when the football yep. playoffs are done. Basketball season opens Wednesday. Most teams are practicing, already getting things going. Third and long. East and Box Elder a little behind. I don't think they mind. I don't think anyone but the basketball coaches yeah, mind. Right. Well, the odd thing is the East head coach, George List, he used to be the assistant basketball coach. He just stopped doing that this year. Now that he's not coaching basketball, no problem. No wonder they're doing so well. Oh, boy, that's, uh, that is costly. You had a third and nine. Now you're back to a third and 15, third and 14 and a half. And Bauman's got to get his team all the way to the 47-yard line. Pretty clean game. Only four penalties, and we're in the third quarter. Downfield, Bendinger got it at the 50. Two Bendinger, big catch all the way down to the 27-yard line, and East comes up big. Third and 14, and they go to Bendinger for 40 yards. Bendinger, we talked about him as a uh, running back, but he also averages 12 yards per catch. He gets more here. Almost break. Well, it breaks the first tackle. Finally gets pulled down from behind. What a big clutch. 40 yards. Clutch time to come up with that. The drive is alive for the 28-yard line. First of 10. We were dangerously close to our first punt there. <laughs> we don't want that. A 
Feely wrapped up in the backfield. They will lose yardage there. Nate Davies, Steve Lang. What it, it says Crazy S, Crazy Steve on the back of his jersey. That's Steve Lang. He's had a couple of interceptions this year. It comes up big for the Bees there, second and long. They'll try to get some of it back on the ground again, and Havili gets them about three yards, but they're going to end up with another third and about 12. You know, the box elder coaching staff played pretty close to the vest in the halftime interview with Reese. No reason to give anything away. But he said, we're not going to change a thing. In the first half, box elder was getting no penetration into the offensive backfield. East was running for six, eight, ten yards on first down every time. We've seen some down and distance problems for East because Box Elder is getting penetration into the offensive backfield, sometimes up the middle, sometimes from the outside, but they've been sending guys and getting back there. Bauman to the air. Got a receiver. Oh, the, the pass looks like it might have been batted down again. No, he got hit as he, he got moved. hit. But the receiver, he had Ben Lowe, had beat the defender, and he was headed for the end zone. But it will go for not fourth down. I think that was Carl Whittison getting in there. He is just a junior, but he got in there and hit Bauman just as he threw, which is why the ball was so underthrown. And they're going to go for it. Fourth and 13. Uh, you don't want to get down at this end of the field. Yeah. You know, you... It's a 48 yard field goal, and you're not going to punt from the 31 down by 17. They've been setting it up all day, though. They've run a couple sprint outs. They've got them used to looking for that. Bauman rolls out. Everybody goes to the far side. You see it here as he sprints out. Watch everyone go to the left side of the screen with it. When he throws back, all of a sudden, you got two blockers out in front of you and one defender to beat. No problem. Fourth and 12 becomes first and 10. Great work by Havili to get that first down. Good hustle by Box Elder to recover and get back there and prevent the score. Johnson still trying to get yards as they hang onto his leg. The thing about coming back and making that tackle on fourth and 12, even though you give up the first down and obviously you wanted to stop, now East has got to run a few more plays. The clock is moving. 12 minute quarters. We've only got four minutes to go in the third. The box elders up by 17. East is spending some more time trying to get to the end zone here. Well, we said quarterback at the start of this drive. They've got to turn this into points. They held Box Elder on fourth down. We'll see what happens. Reverse. Inside play to Bendinger. Touchdown, East. Same play they used for their first touchdown, although this time it's Bendinger taking that inside handoff. And East, they really needed that score. If they hadn't scored on that possession, down 17, going uh, late in the third quarter, going to the fourth, they would have been in serious trouble. At least this gives them a little hope. And the extra point is good, but the flags and... going to be against Box Elder. These kids are starting to back up. Could have a pretty long extra point attempt here. There's the Skyline football team working their way into the stadium. Of course, we'll bring you the 5A championship right after this one. Actually, about an hour after this. It'll be at 3 o'clock. Skyline in the state title game for the fourth time in six years. They won the title two years ago. Beat Orem 7-3 on a very cold night. They play some football over there. So they'll try the point after once again with Ben Lowe. And Ben's got it. East is clawing their way back into this ball game. It's the Bees by 10.
This week, R.C. Willie gives you free jazz tickets with every Sealy mattress set purchased. Buy any twin or full-size set and get a free ticket. Buy a queen set and get two tickets. Buy a king-size set and get four tickets to an upcoming jazz game. Could it get any better? Every Sealy set is value-priced with prices starting as low as $119. Queen sets from just $399. And kings just $599 a set. Buy America's number one mattress at R.C. Willie sale prices and see the number one team in the NBA, the Utah Jazz. Nobody beats R.C. Willie. With a newly enhanced Vortec 4300 V6 engine and available push-button four-wheel drive, the GMC Jimmy can handle virtually anything you might encounter on the road. But you may appreciate Jimmy even more for its ability to get you out of your own driveway. Lease a new Jimmy for just $3.39 a month for 24 months at your Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealers now. are available at Great Expectations inside Valley Fair. Back to a 10-point ball game here at Rice Stadium. The 4A football championships as East gets on the scoreboard here in the second half. And this kickoff brought to you by your Utah Intermountain GMC truck dealers. Kurt Anderson with the bees and East tripped up at the 14-yard line. Fox Elder will take over there. Here's another look from the R.C. Willie best seat in the house at Boo Bendinger's touchdown. Keep in mind, there were a couple of uh, third and longs, uh, fourth and long on this drive, and Bendinger scores to wrap it up. Bendinger with the touchdown, and he really deserved that because he's the one who caught the pass for 40 yards on third and 14, and they also converted fourth and 12 on their way to the end zone on that drive. That's the angle for the R.C. Willie best seat in the house. Right back comes Box Elder. This could be a touchdown, and it is Phil Haywood. 86 yards. Get something going. Box Elder comes right back. That is just unbelievable. This offense is unbelievable. That is the longest touchdown run of the year by a Box Elder player. Hayward had a 73 yarder earlier this year. Dunn had a 78 yarder. Hayward just went 86 yards. Just when East had gotten back in the game. Wow. Here's another look. We'll see who springs Haywood, where he gets the block that gets him outside. I think he might have been looking at the pitch, and he cut up field, and there's just nobody in the picture. It's a foot race, but he doesn't quite have the right angle to catch Haywood. As Devon Wood almost got him there, and Haywood, all of a sudden, he had 50 yards at the half. Now he's got 196 yards on 14 carries. Anybody want to do the math on that? That is impressive. This kid can run. Two news has learned. <laughs> this is just in. Haywood can run. That is 14 yards a carry. 14 yards a carry. 14 carries, 196 yards, and two touchdowns. And you know, it's one thing to build up the stats, but to do it at a clutch moment in the game. You know? That was a moment when East is just starting to climb back in the game, and boom, he breaks the big play. It's one thing when you rack up the big stats when the game is over, but that was a key play. Any momentum East had. This has got to be frustrating away. for East, too, and their coaches, because they, they do. They have a very nice drive, and now you need to come out and make a stick, and it's one play, and you're done. It was a flag down on the extra point, and it was the first major penalty of this game, a 15-yarder against Box Elder. Roughing the kicker. Let's go down to Reese. 
it was roughing the kicker on East. East had three players right on the kicker on the extra point, and they got him, and they threw the flag, and that is the first biggie of the game, and it gives Box Elder even more momentum. Things going well for the Bees. Matt Pimbley to kick off from the 45-yard line. This one ought to go out of the end zone, and it will. So East will take over at the 20, but again, a, a fine drive on their last possession, and just that quick goes right back in favor of the Bees. The East offense has done some good things today. The one thing they have not had, no field position. None at all. They have had a long field every time they've gotten the ball. They got two touchdown drives and had another good drive where they were inside the 10, gamble on fourth down, and didn't score. So the East offense has done some good things today, but uh, they average about 26 points a game. They got 14 here late in the third quarter. Well, and every time Box Elders had poor field position, one play and they're out of it. Bound into the air. They're going to have to be throwing a lot now. Pass is complete to Ben Lowe. Fumble. The ball is loose. It looks to me like Box Elder has it. A disaster has struck for East. Alou was struggling for extra yardage at the end, and he commits the third East turnover. The first two led to 10 points for Box Elder. You see this a lot of times. He gets hit once, he gets hit twice. The guy's struggling for extra yards, and it's the third or fourth guy in who strips the ball and pokes it away. And the way that one flew out, I think Lowe got hit from behind by somebody he didn't see because the ball flew ahead of him downfield. Be careful now. Box Elder could strike in a hurry. Done to throw. He's throwing downfield. Complete at the 10-yard line. Mike Sumco. That is the first complete pass of the day for Box Elder. They've been 0 for two through the air. Now one for three. Dunn DeSumco, who has 41 receptions, over 1,000 yards receiving on the year coming into this game. And he threw a, a defender hanging on him. Yeah, we talked about how much he grew in the offseason. Five inches, added a lot of weight. He's strong enough to make that play. A year ago, he couldn't. Because he's such a late bloomer, there aren't a lot of colleges looking at him, although I've heard lately Utah State's had some interest in him. Well, his mother works for the University of Utah. She's a professor up here. And she calls Ron McBride four times a day. <laughs> Ron, can I do anything for you? Father's a radiologist up in Brigham City. Oddly enough, his dad played football at BYU. Some family ties there to both schools. BYU, they got a game tomorrow? I don't know, do they? Do you play in this week? <laughs> well, we'll check on that, Dave. Get back to you during the 5A game at 3 o'clock. There's the Fremont football team as they're set to go. Only their second year of football, and these kids are in a state championship. If they can win that game, they'd be the first second-year team ever to do it. But right now, the Bees trying to put away East. They're up 31-14 and threatening to score again. First down for Mark Dunn and the Bees. And Dunn slips on that turf. Just trying to make his cut, went right down. He gets up shaking his head, says, man. Well, the thing you gotta remember about this is this grass went in over the summer. And it's it's natural grass on top of an astroturf surface, surface, and a lot of the skill position players have had problems, both in the college games the U.S. played in here and this game today. Guys have slipped in the open field. But we were talking to Dr. Chris Hill, the Utah Athletic Director, at the half, and he said, hey, this is still very new grass. It'll be more mature. Apparently, they're going to add some bluegrass to this and toughen it up a little for next season. Presumably Reese Stein as well. Breaks the tackle at the four. Almost got brought down by his heels. 37-14. This game is now looking like every other Box Elder game all year. The average score in a Box Elder football game, 39-18 to this season. That's the average score. Well, they're right there, just about. 38-14 here today. Little field goal put him right on the mark. 
Oh boy, they're happy. Those Northern Utahns have made the trek. Well worth it. Well, we mentioned this earlier, and of course we talked to the mayor, who commented on how empty the town was. But everybody's here, and you look at the stands, they're just packed. Of course, they haven't had a championship in Brigham City since 1960. Yep, been a long time. That 8 nothing win over Payson. Seven titles all together, so there is some championship history with this team. But, of course, then you look at Skyline, and they've got, you know, four in the last few weeks. <laughs> well, East has got 14. It's won 14 state title games, and, uh, yep. and Box Elders won seven. So combine them for 21 between them. And remember, they started playing state title games back in 1919. So these two schools are combined to win 21 titles in 76 years. These are programs with a little bit of history. And both programs should be pretty good next year. There will be 30 seniors graduating off this Box Elder team. But the sophomore team at uh, Box Elder was unbeaten this year. And well, only and 10 East, seniors graduating yeah. from East. And their JV was 6-3 and three this year. So East, they got the future is really bright for that club. And, and with that coaching staff, although... Uh, Coach Georgilis, he told me one of his biggest concerns is whether or not he can keep those guys, all those football players, Bellini and Capucci and everyone. Well, East will try again. Boo Benninger gets up past the 25-yard line to the 27. But it's going to be a tough road to hoe at this point. East won their first title back in 1919. You know they won a game that year, 118 to nothing over Davis. Brutal. Things have changed in the world of football. Well, that was uh, supposed to be one of the greatest teams ever in Utah prep history. That 1919 Leopard team averaged 61 points a game. That's incredible, that average. That, that's just awesome. They go around the left side with Havili. Havili, a great cutback, and he could go. He got caught from behind, but he knew he had some quick guys after him. Watch him once he breaks into the open field here. Great cut behind the block, and there's going to be another great cut right there. Yep, another guy slipping on the turf. But watch. He's peeking. He knows he's being gained on. He can sense it coming. He started peeking over his shoulder and swerving, but Kurt Anderson still tripped him up. Agbor can't get in from the five. We haven't seen much of Steve Agbor. I suspect that the ankle's probably bothering him a little bit. But he heard it two weeks ago in the quarterfinals. Couldn't play last week. Agbor actually couldn't practice until this week. He practiced Wednesday for the first time, and they weren't sure how much he was going to be able to play, but as we've mentioned, they do have three guys averaging more than six yards a carry, so if one guy's not 100%, they can go with the other two. Today, Box Elder's going six yards a carry. Ah. Bauman keeps it. Does he get in? Touchdown. There's, There's a, a flag. flag down on the far side, so hang on. The East kids are starting to back up. It may be a legal motion. That's the ball. They're going to back that one up. I didn't see any movement in the line. Maybe there was some. It might have been out. They had three wide receivers to the right. It could have been out there as well. You are right, oh wise one. You talking to Reese again? <laughs> Must be. Well, they'll back it up to the seven-yard line, and East will try again. Matt Bellini, the former Cougars, the guy that most of the coaches on this team really give credit for their offensive successes, and I know he'd love to get him in the touchdown right here. Peter Johnson behind Bauman. He's going to throw to the corner. Benninger, touchdown. You get the feeling watching this game that East could score four touchdowns that it would take to win it. The question is, could they stop Box Elder while they were doing it? East has had some great drives today. Here's another one. This is just a fade pattern to the back corner. They know Bendinger's one-on-one. -on -one. He's a great athlete, and they figure he'll go get the ball, and he does. Actually, a little nice technique there. He screened the defender off, and uh, the ball was thrown, so that was a touchdown or nothing. You know, you mentioned no Bendinger not playing much football at all, really. And he hasn't played since he, the sixth grade. He actually credits uh, 
Coach McBride was getting him back interested in football. Went to some of his camps, and, and who knows, that may pay off for Coach Mack down the road here. Well, the East coaches say if Bendinger decides to play college football, and there's some interest from the in-state schools, that if he decides to play, once he gets the other coaching, they say there's no telling how far he'll go because right now he's doing everything on instinct and on raw ability. They say in, in practice, he's such a good athlete, he's really not pressured. They said, but the more success he has, the more interested he gets, the harder he works. If he gets with some good coaches, he could really go wild. There's Harry Renfro, our cameraman, high atop Rice Stadium. A beautiful afternoon last year. He was up there wearing his uh, woolies, just freezing. If you ever see the high school promos running on Channel 2, there is one picture. It's only for about two seconds. you got to watch closely for it. But he is up there with Todd Marshall in a blizzard. It is just coming down. They were so cold. And it got him two seconds of fame. And we were down here just toasty. 38-21 as he tries to cut into that lead. We're coming to the end here of the third quarter. Ball is fumbled, but picked back up. And Fox Elmer's going to have good field position up to the 31. Now remember, the last time East did something good, they came right back out and allowed Fox Elder to go the distance in one play for a touchdown. So they really need to be careful here if they want to continue to fight back into this ballgame because the Bees are in control. There's Boo Bent on the sideline. You can tell what a great day it is looking at the shadows. Not a cloud in the sky. It is so warm. Harry's got to like that up on the roof, you know. And the guy's a Southern California. You just can't handle too much snow. And the last couple years, it's been cold here. Larry H. Miller Toyota presents the Toyota Ride and Decide Challenge. Now's the time to test drive Toyota's top competitors to see how they match up against the Toyota Camry, Corolla, Tacoma, and 4Runner. Rev the engines, test the brakes, hit the accelerators. You can even kick the tires. We're so sure you'll prefer a Toyota over the competition that we'll let you test drive both at one location. We'll even give you a free pumpkin pie from JB's. Take the Toyota Ride and Decide Challenge today at Larry H. Miller Toyota. Whatever it takes! The biggest home electronics and appliance event is happening now during the Super Saturday weekend sale at Granite Furniture, where you'll get up to 20 pounds of Norbass Turkey free with your new purchase. Plus, get one-year interest-free financing on Magic Chef appliances and no payments or interest till 1997 on select RCA televisions, big screens, VCRs, and camcorders. This RCA 13-inch TV with remote is just $168.95, and an RCA forehead hi-fi VCR is only $247.95. The Super Saturday weekend sale happening now at Granite Furniture. We move to the final quarter at Rice Stadium. Box Elder, 38-21 is the B's lead, and they have the football first and 10 at the 30-yard line. Mark Dunn, a fine young quarterback for Box Elder. He has led the team well today and got some great fumble. Fumble, and it looks like East has it, and the Leopards come up with a huge turnover. You can feel the emotion just surging through the crowd. They haven't been this excited since it was about 10-7 back in the second quarter. East needs to score three times here. They need some quick turnovers, and they get one here. Is it on the hit? It's on the exchange, actually. Looked like a bad exchange, and look at East getting to the ball. Mato Kutu, it looks like, came up with the uh, fumble recovery. Quick handoff inside, and good yardage for Havili. Havili all the way down to the 14-yard line, and the Leopards are pumped up. Great balance by Havili. He was getting hit. He was off balance, staggering sideways, and he still kept the legs driving and powered forward and finished off the run, picked up an extra five yards. Turnovers are what really helped Box Elder burst out in this game, and now they come right back to help out East. Don't go away, folks. We got a wild one at Rice Stadium. The 4A football champion about to be crowned. Blake Bauman sacked. Nate Putnam, his 11th sack of the season. Nate's been busy today. Well, you're going to see Nate uh, come off the bottom of your screen here. It looked like he just got brush blocked just a little, almost untouched. He comes in. Bauman was trying to throw out a three-strip. 
three-step drop. You almost call that a cover sack because he wanted to be rid of the ball by the time he got hit. He thought he was going to unload that in a hurry, but all the cornerbacks came up and jammed the guys in the line of scrimmage. He wanted to throw a quick out, and there was nobody open. Reverse again, that inside play to Benninger. And Benninger gets back to the line of scrimmage and a couple of more. And what he actually, does is he gets the sack back from the... Six, he gets seven the yards, yards every time on that play today. I haven't seen much of that play. And, you know, but the hot play now in college football is that quick screen inside. And yeah, they love to run screens to the wide receiver. The Utes have done that pretty pretty Come successfully. On. And actually, there's a bad call in that San Diego State yeah, game. Yeah, that penalty. It was 14-0. Really it would have made it 21. And Utah and BYU could be playing for an outright conference championship yep. tomorrow. Even the WAC admitted that was a bad call. Third and eight. Bauman to throw. Looking into the end zone for Benninger. Boy, they have a lot of faith in him. Throwing into double coverage, figuring he's going to go up and get the ball and out jump people. Bauman's slow to get up. He took a hit. Well, this is fourth down now. Fourth down and about eight. Now, you got to wonder about a field goal here. They're sending low into the game. He is their place kicker, but he's also a wide receiver. It looks like he's going in as a wide receiver here. He's also a defensive back. Lowe does it all. But they're going to go. They are down by 17 points. So you figure they need three scores, but they're not going to kick here. Fourth down. They need eight yards. They need to cross the five-yard line. Bauman again to the air. He's got to get rid of it. Pass is batted down at the last second. And you see Peter Johnson furious. He claims he wants a pass interference. He won't get it. The Fox Elder defense has held. And credit Casey Munns, number 40. So Box Elder holds, they lead 38-21, and we'll be back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. I don't think being the best means you have to be the tallest, or the fastest, or have the best outside shot. To me, being the best means that when the competition is giving 100%, Get 110. First Security Bank, currently giving 110%. When it comes to recycling, everyone can make a difference, but we've got to recycle smart. Your Coca-Cola bottler reminds you that recycling plastic is easy. First, remove all lids and collars from plastic containers and rinse them out. Then, flatten to conserve space. Remember, only two-liter bottles and milk and water containers are recycled locally. Call Utah Recycles to find out if curbside recycling is available in your area. Join your Coca-Cola bottler, Utah Recycles, and the Utah Soft Drink Association and help keep Utah beautiful. Together, Utah Recycles. Trucks and more trucks. It's 4x4 time, and we've just received a special allocation of nearly 300 pickups, Blazers, Tahoes, and Suburbans. They had the best price in town on anything. Just look at this new pickup, discounted $2,300. Or this Blazer, only $289 a month. For more than even the pricing, it was just how I was treated here at Jerry Siner. It's truck time at Jerry Siner Salt Lake. We're making more than great deals. We're making friends to last a lifetime. Well, the Bees come up big there. He's trying to cut back into that lead of Box Elders after Box Elder had fumbled the ball, but Bees come right back with it. So Mark Dunn leading the charge of quarterback for Box Elder. East piles him up there, nothing doing that. You talked about all the basketball players that are on the field right now. Reese Stein is with their coach, who's probably a little nervous right now, Reese. <laughs> One guy that can't wait for the football season to end quick enough is basketball coach Kim Peterson, the box elder. you got a lot of players out there. Yeah, I can the other night. We've got nine of them that are still out there playing. Uh, Any time to get ready for basketball season, or are you just worried about this? Uh, I think we got this in the bag right now, but we'll get started Monday with them, and uh, we'll have about four practices to get ready for Pro Bowl. Well, that's, that's the easy thing. At least you got nothing less than the defending state champions coming up. Yeah, we picked a good one to start with, but uh, these kids have all played for me last year, so we know the system already. Well, maybe it's a little too early to talk about basketball season, but I'll tell you, there are some big grins on the face of the Box Elder fans right now, and they're starting to think basketball a little bit. All right, Reese, you got a nice seat up there. Hey, Chris Kerr just laid a big hit 
And now the East defense playing well on this drive, at least the first two plays of this drive so far. But we've seen how explosive Fox Hiller can be, so I'm not going to say much more beyond that. Third and nine. Done to the air. Fires long. He's got a receiver. Caught at midfield. Touchdown, Bees. Dunn is lying back at the three-yard line. He was just lying on the ground with his arms in the air. What a great pass, and he got popped hard at the end of the play. What a great pass. He's just walking off the field now. He knows that was a beauty. He was just laying on the ground. I wish you could have seen him when, when the ball crossed the goal line. He just put his arms up and laid back. What a great call. They've hardly thrown the ball all day. He was one for three before that pass. Well, I told you I didn't want to say anything, and uh, Box Elder, they've come out and done it again. Done to Sumco. They hooked up for a 93-yarder against Murray in the postseason, and they've done it again. When it comes to beautiful things for your home, nobody beats RC Willie. Get ready for the holidays this weekend with this casual sofa and love seat, $6.99 for both. For that big Thanksgiving dinner, seat your guests at your new dining room table from RC Willie. With dozens of styles to choose from, there's something for every taste and every budget. Carve your Thanksgiving turkey with this electric carving knife free with any purchase over $2.99. Instant credit, Utah's lowest prices, no payment until March, free delivery, and a free gift. Nobody beats RC Willie. George thinks he knows about fresh fish. He spends cold cash to sit in a cold boat drinking cold coffee. That's fun. Men are weird. I just come to Dan's. I get really fresh Market Street seafood, not just trout. And I always get my limit. Saturday only, get Market Street raw tiger shrimp at our lowest price this year, just $3.49 per pound. And certified Angus prime rib roast is just $4.99 per pound. And that's what I call a great deal. This is like home for us. The Chris Monty's Owner's Mario's Cafe. Every little detail makes us the best. The best coffee beans, the best pastries, even the best way to get out coffee stains. If we do things right the first time, we have more time to do the fun stuff. Don't just wash, treat, and wash with liquid Tide. Build in pre-treat ingredients, break up stains. The wash does the rest. Pre-treat to help get out most tough stains. Tide works for us, and uh, if something's working, why change it? If it's gotta be clean, it's gotta be Tide. Oh, this is a place, if I didn't own it, I'd definitely come here. East has let Box Elder do it again. So frustrating for the Leopards who have given up countless big plays. This kickoff brought to you by your Utah Intermount GMC truck dealers. Bendinger returning the ball for East, but big pass from Dump to Sunco, and it's 45-21, and here it is again. Dunn just airs this thing out. What a great arm. Let's run down to uh, Reese Stein, who's got Mark Dunn's mother, who, by the way, is a professor here at the U. Reese? I've got Dion Dunn, uh, mother of the quarterback, and tell me about that last pass. That was the one he likes to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've been keeping it on the ground, starting to loosen it up a little bit here. You like that better? Uh, I like it when they mix it up. It's less predictable. Yeah, 45-21 uh, right now. Are you guys breathing easy? We never breathe easy until the clock says it's over. <laughs> right. Uh, congratulations so far since having a whale of a game. Thanks so much. We love the game. <laughs> All right. Dion Dunn, the mother of quarterback Mark Dunn of Box Elder High, Dave. And a Ute herself, I would assume. And see, that's a woman the coach, Wes Raisler, can really really trust with the football crowd. It's not over until yep. the clock says, the basketball coach is up there going, yeah, we got it in the bag. Yep. West Racer's going to watch this game on tape and just cringe when he hears that, even though it'll be over by then. Well, the basketball <laughs> coach wants his kids sitting down. No question. 45-21, and uh, oh, he twisted a knee. He doesn't want that. No, no, no. He needs to talk to the basketball coaches at Skyline. This is an annual problem for them. Well, it's, you know, actually in high school sports, just about everywhere you have this kind of situation. Peter Johnson 
Now we're getting to the point of the game where Johnson's having a good day, but how effective is he going to be? You're down by 24 points with seven minutes to go. You're going to have to start throwing it, and they're not going to have time to, to pound the ball down the field. Nope. Alvin will throw. Pass is complete to Kafusi. And Kafusi across midfield all the way down to the 35-yard line. But that's a nice open field tackle by Casey Munz. Kafusi is a load to bring down in the open field. He is just a junior, one of the 30 juniors East will have back next year. His older brother coaching the team. Nice catch. The ball's a little behind him. Got to get him by the legs. You tackle Kafusi up high. You don't tackle him up high. You bounce off him, you hit the ground, and he keeps running. Kafusi, a great defensive player as well. His brother Rich, though, told me he'd really like to see him play tight end in college and presumably at Utah following, well, I shouldn't yeah, say I all know. the brothers. <laughs> Well, he, he, he's he got uh, three of them there now, one on a mission. Well, four, I should say. A coach, two playing, and one on a mission. Yes, but the coach went to the Y, so I think we know where he wants him to go. I think he's I think he's leaning a little red. That's my guess. You think Jason is? I think so. Okay. And I think Rich is, too. They're sick of Hama wearing red. Now, that's odd. We'll see tomorrow. I asked Rich what color you're going to be wearing on Saturday. He said, I think I'll have the blue on. Bauman in a little bit of trouble. Flag down in the backfield as Bauman tries to turn this into something. A nice run, but it could be coming back. There's a I flag down at the 40. I think it's going to be a hold. He picked up the first down and more getting down to the 15, but it is a hold. You see, when you see the flag go down back there, pretty much over. See if we can pick up the hold here, but he looking left, slips one guy. I don't see the hold there. Nice run, but... Uh, the wiped out. Look at him, quarterback, putting his head down at the end of the run, getting some extra yards. And Blake Brown, he's bounds. a tough kid. And the officials will sort this one out. You don't need this call. Yeah. We see more penalties here late in the game. And midway through the third quarter, we only had three penalties. And the referee, about standing about 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage, starts throwing them into those massive offensive linemen. You pretty much know what's coming. You remember that play too, huh? The old flag of the mask. That was an NFL play of the week a couple of years ago. Who was it? Was it was the Vikings. Into the face mask of one of the Vikings. There's a, like a little metal weight in there. Those things hurt. So it's a second and 26. It's like watching the Aggies. Bauman to throw, and he's throwing deep for Benninger. Intercepted. Great catch back at the 15 yard line Jeremy Barber with the interception and that is East fourth turnover of the day East has fumbled twice and this is a second interception that Box Elder's been able to pick off trying to get it to Bending or just threw it a little too far Bending actually got a hand out and tripped him up or uh, he might have had a return going there great catch five it look at that right on the finger fingertips Five interceptions this year for Barber. And again, Box Elder comes up big with five minutes to go in this game. They will... Oh, my goodness. Another touchdown coming for the Bees. One point after is no good, but a 30-point lead, and Phil Haywood, what a day. We're going to have to start going through the record book and see what the record is for most yards rushing in a championship game, because Haywood now has 286 yards on 17 carries, three touchdowns. He already had an 86-yarder, and now you put this one on top of it. 286 yards rushing for Phil Hayward, and the 5'8 senior 
is having a colossal game. Well, the most yards ever rushing in a high school football game is Kit Rollins. Great running back, played for Woods Cross a few years ago. 423 yards in one game. He went on to Kansas State. Let's go down on the uh, sideline with Reese Stein. Reese, they got to be happy on the Box Elder side. Well, I'll tell you, we're up in the stands, and we've got a couple of people that came a long way to see this game. Their uh, head coach, Wes Racer's parents, we've got Aubrey Carter and Wanda Carter. And you drove over from where? Denver. All the way from Denver? You yeah. did that a lot to see this? Yeah. Not yeah, that all very often. Uh, what do you think? Was it worth the trip? Oh, yes, I'll say. Okay, a couple of happy Box Elder fans all the way from Denver to see their son, the head coach. Maybe, probably, looks like he's going to win a state championship, Dave. Boy, what a day for the Bees and a, and a big day for their running backs. Well, Haywood with 286 yards now. An amazing day. Bendinger goes down on the return. The only two people who've ever rushed for more yards than that in a Utah high school football game, Kit Rawlings, who you mentioned with a state record, 423 yards, and Kelly Smith, who played for Beaver in 1978 and 79. He had three games bigger than this. He had a 292, he had a 303 yard game, and he had 335 yards against Hurricane back in 1979. So uh, he's in some pretty select company. There was a kid, if you follow high school sports, there was a kid at Wainimi High School in Oxnard, California, who just had a 600-yard game about two or three weeks ago. He ran for 600 yards in a game and was featured on the ESPN. And a lot of big runs, and they, obviously yeah. you'd have a lot of big <laughs> runs. Kelly Smith, by the way, went on to play at BYU. Obviously highly recruited when he was turning in games like that. Yeah, that gets to the average recruiter's attention. Kid went for 300 yards again? Okay, we'll take a look at him. Well, and he had three of them, as you say. Well, in, in 78, 79, two and 79, I mean, yeah. geez. There's Phil Haywood on the sideline as Box Elder. Headed for a state title, their first since 1960. You know, you think about what it takes to accomplish a 600-yard game rushing. This kid, and the kid's name escapes me at Wainimi High in Oxnard who did it. But if you think about it, he breaks 600 yards. He's done more than twice what Hayward's done today. Incredible. Yeah. Well, and, and the, like opposing, say, the opposing team must have really appreciated that kind of sportsmanship, too. I think that goes <laughs> a long way towards telling us what high school football can really be all about when it's played incredibly well. Who wrong. knows? He might have been able to get even more. Now yeah, that's a little hard to believe. <laughs> High school teams tend to average about 300 yards a game if they're pretty good. Bauman's pass is complete at the 50-yard line. It's been low, low down to the 31. But you know, it's a little different than what we had here a couple years ago because that game was a cold night game. It was uh, Orem and Skyline, and Orem had a young team and lost a frustrating game 7-3 to to Skyline. They came back the next year, won the state championship. And here as you watch East, they're still playing hard. They're still going at it. Obviously, they're down 51-21 to with three and a half minutes to go. But they only lose 10 seniors, and only about five of those play a lot of downs. So they basically have 17 of their 22 starters back. Screen pass set up to Havili. Havili. A great piece of running down to the 15-yard line. You know, we talk about how many, how few seniors East has, but Havili is a sophomore. They got him for two more years. So you can see, as East is playing right now, and you got to wonder, what is this going to mean for East next season? And I think, again, it's crucial that this coaching staff remains well, somewhat intact anyway, because you've got to give them a lot of credit. They've, they've learned how to motivate these guys. Names like... Sikahami and Bellini and Kafusi don't need to, I mean, they know how to motivate. Those guys all uh, went to play at BYU. Cecil uh, Thomas and Al Dolan played at Utah. They're also on the staff. Oh, it's down east. That was headed for Boo Benninger. <laughs> but it comes out six either way you look at it. That is a great catch. Jason Barlow hauls it in. That was a tremendous catch by Barlow. You'll see that somebody may have messed up a pattern there because Bendinger is going to be a couple steps, and I think the ball was, they've been throwing for Bendinger all day. Too. But Barlow gets out, and there's Bendinger behind him. Great catch. Now, Barlow's older brother, 
is the defensive coordinator. John Barlow is the uh, defensive coordinator, and he coached most of this team when they were eighth graders playing Little League and winning the championship. He coached the sophomore team when they were 7-1. He's an East grad himself from the late 70s, and he's been at East High through a lot of the turmoil and the trouble they've had the last 20 years. This season's been especially gratifying for Jason's older brother. So this team has been in development for a lot of years. You know, you talk about the East High coaching staff. One of the reasons it's going to be difficult to bring all these guys back together, Kafusi, Bellini, Dolan, Sikahama, Thomas, is because these guys all have other jobs. They're not teachers at the school, yeah. and they're coming in after hours. And I talked to uh, Kafusi especially. He said he's been working for a major airline carrier that might have a sports arena named after here in town. You know, not, that, not that I want to give him a plug or anything, but he says they've been very good about working with my hours and letting me, you know, shift them around as we, you know, we end up with a Wednesday game all of a sudden during the short week because of UEA, and they allow me to adjust my hours. They've been very flexible, but it's tough to say that they're all going to be able to do this again next year, and there is definitely a certain chemistry between this group of kids and these coaches. Aren't you going to uh, Reno for Thanksgiving? <laughs> Uh, I'm a driving day. what carrier? <laughs> you know, I, on that same subject there, I, I talked... I could mention the carrier, but <laughs> the, the, company, the, the company that's got a sports arena named after it wouldn't like it. Uh, Bellini told me just before the game he'd like to get a job at East High School. He, yeah. wants, he wants to coach. He's a very good coach, and he would prefer to coach at the high school level. He, he loves East High School, and this year he's actually a uh, part-time substitute teacher, but he's hoping to hook on with East full-time next year. say that the objective of Box Elder right now is to run out the clock. Uh, but we'll see what, what happens here. There's 2.42 to left, and they pretty much got the game in hand. Well, you got to remember, some of the big plays they've broken, they have, I mean, obviously they had the long pass where they were looking deep, but on, you know, they just had a long run, and they were running between the tackles. They were looking to run clock, and they popped yeah. the big play. But one thing that'll happen for both these schools, we've already talked about how good the JV and sophomore teams are. But as teams have success, a kid who's coming into the school as a freshman who's a good athlete and could play any sport, he'll naturally tend to gravitate towards the more successful sports. You've certainly seen it with football at Skyline, with baseball at Taylorsville. And at East, you know, they've had some good basketball teams over the last few years. A kid maybe doesn't want to play football, wants to go play basketball. This is going to help the teams down the line as well. You know what really helps is just start winning. Yeah, I mean, no East question. had so many losing years, and these coaches had to come in and just get it out of their head. Let's run down on the sideline. Phil Haywood has done his job, and he's uh, on the sideline with our Reese Stein. Reese? Uh, Phil, what a great game. Did you expect anything like this? Uh, I can't I'll be honest with you. I wasn't expecting, you know, this good of a game. I was pretty worried at first, you know. Got the ball five times in the first quarter. I wasn't expecting to come out and run two 80-yard touchdowns. So, uh, what, what's been the difference? Uh, the offensive line just made huge holes, and I just run in, break one tackle, and be gone. That option just seems to have East confused. You've got so many weapons. Yeah, the turbo option just, just you know, read it good, and it just goes really well with us. But here, here's one of those offensive linemen, Brian Stender. Uh, what's it been like in the trenches today? Pretty good. We've controlled them. We just dominated them. Open the holes. Run backs can do anything. Well, you guys will win a state championship, it looks like. What do you, how do you feel? I feel great. <laughs> offensive lineman, Brian Stender. Back to you guys. Uh, all right, Reese. They got the starters resting up, getting ready to carry the trophy around. Meanwhile, uh, Fox Elders made a few substitutions. Dallas Tyler, the junior, comes in at quarterback. Pete Levitt, one of the running backs. Well, not that there's anything really pretty about a 51-28 game, but one of the upsides is you can get all the subs in. You can get the guys who've been practicing all year. You can give the young sophomores and juniors who might not be playing regularly a taste of what it's like to play at this level and play in this stadium. And that's part of the magic of the playoffs. Everybody wants to get to the big stadium, you know, play in a big venue. They've grown up watching, you know, BYU and Utah and Utah State play. And this year, as we look at the fans celebrating, oh, look at these stats. Look at these numbers. Phil Haywood, 286 yards rushing. Deacon, 160, and even Havili. Just a huge day for all these kids, regardless of who they're playing for. That's 618 yards rushing by those three guys and five touchdowns. I guess the turf wasn't too slippery for them. <laughs> I think they love sports grass. Third down, the pitch is made just before Tyler gets hit. Uh, Deacon won't get a first. He 
gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Well, this is going to be one heck of a celebration up in uh, Brigham City. Oh, they've man. got a uh, they've got a parade there. I guess they're going to have uh, some fire engines and police cars meeting the kids at the county line as they return. And are they picking players up into they the are stands the fans over there? there? The fans over there lifting Mike Sumco up into the crowd. They're trying to anyway. can hear the fans starting to chant across the way, we are number one, and there is no doubt with what Box Elder has done. Well, they did it the way they've been winning all year with big, big offense. You pointed out all the games they've had, a couple of them up in the 50s, a 68. Yeah. It's only fitting they'd get 51 here, but you know, on the other side of the ball, East, East got no reason to hang their head. What a no. great season it's been, and they're only gonna grow from this. They're gonna get better and better. There's some very hungry kids on the east sideline with 30 yeah. juniors coming back. Um, you know, what, one of the guys in the heart and soul of this team, who I believe is a senior and won't be back, Matt Neiswanger, when he was a sophomore, the coaches told me he would come and practice during two days. He'd practice three hours with the sophomores in the morning, come back and practice with the varsity at night for another three hours. The kid just loves it. The kid couldn't get enough. And that enthusiasm is going to be contagious at East. Now East will get some of their other players in. presumably running out the clock. Well, whoever's left behind in Brigham City is going to be heading for the county line. They're going to meet them at the county line, fire engines, police cars. They're going to get the big escort back into town. And a well big deserved. celebration at the city hall. Box Elder. Box Elder's going to win a state championship for the first time in 35 years, and they're going to have a little bit of a party up there tonight and celebrate. As a team, by the way, 484 yards rushing. That becomes third on the list behind Hunter. They always have great running backs. And Woods Cross. During the years of Kit Rollins, they always ran well. Benninger falls down. That pass a drop. This game is over. The Bees are the 4A state champions. Hold on, folks. Hold the party. The official. The they game cannot end on a defensive penalty. penalty, and two flags went down around the five or ten yard line. I think there was pass interference on that last play, and I think East is going to get one more chance to put some more points on the board because goodness knows we haven't had enough of those today. Well, the upside is Box Elder gets to celebrate twice. Nothing wrong with that. Remember, we got the second half of the doubleheader coming up in uh, probably about half an hour, about 3 o'clock, Skyline and Fremont for the state 5A championship, the last high school football game in Utah this year. The 1A, 2A, and 3A champs have all been crowned already. Last year, they played three of them on the same day. Reese, been some fun championships this year, huh? There have been some great ones. Rich High School successfully defended its 1A championship. Then Grantsville had a great win for the 2A title. And Delta, the big upset of undefeated Pineview to win the 3A. And this game today, I'll tell you, I don't know how the next game can uh, top it. John Hatch is the quarterback, by the way, throwing into the corner. And that'll do it. Let's pick it up, first line, Mr.